All right. I will call our budget hearing to order. Uh, this is the, I have a thing to read. This is the final budget hearing prior to board adoption of the 2023-24 budget document, which the budget committee approved on April 25th, 2023. This is a time for public testimony. The board will have an opportunity for questions and comments during action items portion of the agenda. Any patron who wishes to speak should complete an intent to speak form located on the top of the HSD website and submit it to the executive assistant to the board, Rose Roman. Uh, the hearing is open, and do we have any public testimony? We do not. Uh, declare the hearing, really, just declare the hearing closed. The hearing is now closed. All right. Uh, is there other things you need to present in the in this part, or is that like, was that it? That was it. It's, a, it's time for people to have reviewed uh, the document that was posted to the website. Um, we did do an approved uh, document, which included the superintendent's budget message. Um, and that's been out there since directly after the um, approval on April 25th. Um, just a note that this document, the whole thing, as pretty as it is, it's a guide. And we will likely vary from it as we move throughout the year, as we did this year and every year. So um Jeff and I are available for questions at any time. It doesn't have to be at a budget hearing. We're happy to answer questions that come up. Special thanks to Jeff Jones, um, who just does an exceptional job making sure that our document is complete and that we are offering transparency as we plan our future. And we have action items related to the budget later on. All right. Thank you. I will now call our work session to order. And... Uh, I remember there being a good reason why we were just down here today instead of upstairs. I think it has to do with y'all, but um, so uh, it, uh, as as many people realize this, but the, this meeting is the final of the academic year, final board meeting for our student representatives, board representatives, superintendent, chief operating officer. So uh, I think the idea was just we'll conduct the entire meeting down here. So. Uh, our first item on the work session is a is an update on the athletic field situation uh, with City of Hillsborough Ari, Ari Brown. Yeah, thanks, Chair Watson. Um, I thought it would be good opportunity to uh, give the board a brief update. Um, there's been a lot of uh, maybe information in the news. Uh, I know the board has received some emails about patrons. Uh, regarding the Hillsborough Hops and the Gordon Faber complex. So I just wanted to share a little bit of information um, so that you can be up to speed on things that are going on. Going back uh, a little ways in history with the announcement from the city of Hillsborough and the Hillsborough Hops that a new uh, baseball park will be constructed at the Gordon Faber complex, um, there is right where they're planning to construct that there are three softball fields that um, the city uses the community uses they host tournaments there the city of Hillsborough as this was um, coming into play started um, looking at where could there be other alternatives in the city to replace those fields I want to make sure that everybody understands it's there, nothing um, to my knowledge has been decided. There are several options um, that they are looking at. One of them um, is the Brown Middle School uh, fields. Um, one of the things that would benefit certainly the district is, you know, providing more turf and, and lit fields that aren't at a comprehensive high school. Um, the city is also looking at other options within their current footprint at the Gordon Faber complex. They're also looking potentially at other things at other locations within the city. So um, I wanted to make sure that you knew that there, there are several options, including um, the Brown Middle School fields as an option. Um, one of the things I think that as the city progresses, cost is always, um, something that's going to be um, of most importance to them. 
Um, the project at Brown would be fairly substantial cost. Um, so they may be looking at some alternate options. Um, like I said, that's really um, a lot of the basic information at this point in time. There has been some conceptual uh, drawings that are around. Um, I would say those are pretty preliminary right now. Um, they really need to start to decide um, what direction they wanna go in. I think that'll come as some more information with um, the plan for the hops ballpark, where they are at financially and, and those types of things. So are there any questions that I could answer um, about this subject on the district side or any uh, misinformation that may be out there uh, that I can clarify? Any questions? Yeah, I, I had heard from different people, so it's good to get this. So we've committed, there's no decisions made. We've not committed anything. We're just in no. discussions with the city that if they would like to provide the funding to develop the property we own, we're interested in having that conversation. Exactly. Just as we would with uh, that partnership going way back. I think right. one of the things that was out there was, is the district spending their money to proceed with this on our property? And that, that The answer is no. You know, it's more of that partnership like we use at other facilities and, and through our IGA. So, um, again, just one option for them. It, it may be the option. It may not be the option. Um, I think that um, they had to step back a little bit on the way that they were communicating uh, with this. And I think they are um, working through some of those things and more information will come as they, again, start to develop that budget and that plan further. Pretty good article on Oregon Lab. But I think it might be behind a paywall, but it was pretty detailed explanation of this. So um, we were mentioned once in there, mostly about the city. So I, I'm glad we were able to just get a quick update. Um, yeah, it's, it, if somebody wants to help us develop our property, cool. But yeah, we're not spending anything on it and nothing's been decided. Maybe more to come. More to come. Thank you. Our next uh, item is to announce the curriculum advisory committee vacancies. Um, that's Travis for a minute and then Brooke in a minute. Thank you very much. Um, in the situation page, you can see that it is time for us to announce the openings in our curriculum, uh, community curriculum advisory committee. We do have seven members of the committee whose terms do continue and will not need to reapply to participate next year, but we do have seven openings. Also in your folder, you can see a list of those uh, members of the committee whose terms are ending. You can see that any of those who are marked June 30, 2023 will be ending their terms. They will have the chance to reapply uh, to serve again for another term. Um, they also could choose to not apply again, and then that would be an open seat um, for another person to be appointed. Also in your folder, you can see a 2022-2023 CCAC self-census. The self-census is something that we've done each year for, I don't know, maybe six years now with the Community Curriculum Advisory Committee, um, because the board has expressed a desire to have that committee be somewhat demographically representative of our community of students. And so you can see in the, the slide deck um, that Stephanie created for us, the responses of nine of the 13 current members who responded to the survey, and they identified the race or races that they identify as, the gender, educational level, uh, the representation of diverse communities of students that they believe they can speak for on behalf of. Um, also, the relationship that they have with students in our district, be that they're a student themselves, a parent or guardian, a grandparent, et cetera. The geography of the elementary attendance areas that they represent themselves, whether or not they have students in an elementary school, what neighborhood they live in, and then uh, their background in education. Finally, we have an opportunity for them to state in the survey who you think is missing from the table. Um, and you can see a list there of uh, many members identifying um, 
parents or families who represent students uh, experiencing disabilities, um, students of various faiths, socioeconomic status, and migrant families, for example. So the reason that we share this with the board is an effort to um, give you um, some direction on where to recruit. And if you could, over the summer, uh, provide the information to constituents that you come in contact with about the opportunity to serve and to especially um, promote the idea that uh, we create a more and more diverse and representative CCAC, that would be much appreciated by the group. I am the uh, Brooke will be serving as the secretary to the CCAC next year, and um, she's here alongside me to answer any questions or get feedback from you. Does anybody have any questions? I'll just say, uh, serving at CCAC, a lot of us have, and it's such a joy, and so I think you're going to really enjoy, Brooke, uh, getting to work with that group even more than you have in the past, and uh, congratulations, by the way. It's our first board meeting since you uh, took on the new role, so we're very excited to have you. Any other questions? So, like, looking at the representation slide, people could clearly pick more than one thing um because there's more than nine responses there so I'm, you know it's it's great to see in a district that's 49 percent, 51 percent free and reduced lunch does anybody know what the current number is a little lower now 44 ish that we have representation of students in poverty we it feels like we're a little tag heavy um i'm glad to see students who identify as lgbt on there um will we have what four students next year the goal would be to have i think five, four or five one from each comprehensive high school and then we'd like to have a spot for a student who represents hillsborough online academy or oak street campus as well okay so right now we're um we'd be happy with four to represent each of the comprehensives but then we also have those alternative programs as well so. we had an uh eric and i had the opportunity to interview uh, Oak Street, um, Glencoe, and Hill High this year, and we had way more great candidates for the student position on the board than we could possibly. So that's a good area to look. Like the the students were clearly motivated. All of them were amazing. So you know, hopefully, we can maybe recruit some from from that area as well. Thank you. Rose is going to help us with that information. So right. Thank you for that. Um, and I, I appreciate the willingness of the CCAC to do the self census. It's uh, kind of helpful for us to see what the makeup is there. So thank you, CCAC thank you. members and future ones. I would just say, you know, with former board director Kim Strelchin joining our budget committee, I love that we do have a history of board members wanting to stay invested and active in the district and might be looking for ways to contribute. And the CCAC might be a good opportunity for anybody who might be in that kind of situation. Been there in yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Director Allen served very competently as the chair of the CCAC, so she'd be welcome back. I do want to mention, too, that um, Chair Watson signed uh, certificates that we provided to each of the CCAC members this year. A former member asked for a certificate to show for her resume that she had served on that committee. And so we built one and then thought, why not provide that for everybody at the end of a year of service? So on your behalf, we provided that to the CCAC uh, members. So thank you. I know some of us will report love a certificate. So it'd be a way to get one too, if you wanted to do that kind of thing. If anybody would like to do that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, all right, our next topic is similar. The Budget Committee will have vacancies as well, Michelle. Thank you, Chair Watson. Uh, yes, we have positions one, two, and three are vacant. Um, special thanks to Don Wallace and Michael Smith for their service to the board. We'll reach out to them and see if they'd like to reapply and continue um, serving on the Budget Committee. We have a similar um, goals as the CCAC in terms of diversity and representing our student population. So um, again, if you can keep that in mind as you're encouraging people, um, they're welcome to reach out to us and get information without a commitment to uh, applying or serving. So 
um, spread the word. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Michelle on the budget committee process? All right. So three there, seven on CCAC. And next up is uh, the e Education Equity Advisory Committee. Francesca, I think that's you, right? Good evening. Um, so this was our first year that we enacted the EEAC, which was based off of Senate Bill 732, which um, asked that all school districts over 10,000 um, create this Educational Equity Advisory Committee. So we, we met this year eight times. Um, of our eight meetings, they were 90 minutes each, and it was made up of 12 adults, which consisted of community members, um, parents and caregivers, classified admin and licensed staff, of which seven of the 12 identify as people of color. The other five identify with some other various identity marker that um, portrays them as a um, diverse candidate. Um, in all of our meetings, we had guest speakers and we talked about this year was just all about us getting to know and understand what this committee is, and knowing the diversity of our school system, knowing who it is that um, that we're trying to support and empower and know and value. And so we did have um, teaching and learning came in and they did a little bit of a um, overview as well as federal programs, my multilingual programs, the HR department, special education. And so at this time right now we have um, two open positions of community members. Um, this is a two-year position, so everybody else is staying on board. We'd like to create one more student position. Currently, we have four students that come from two of our high schools, but all four of, and all four of the candidates are female. So we want to really target our Latino male population and add a um, an extra student position, as well as our two open positions that we have really working closely with our Latino PACs to find um, some community members who are interested in serving because the diversity, if you do it proportionate to what our district serves, um, we need some support in that area. And so um, what I'm asking from you is just if you're out there and you hear anything, if you could please um, advertise the Educational Equity Advisory Committee as an option for some of our students as well as um, community members who are looking to get involved. And again, please con connect with Rose because we had some very uh, qualified student representative applicants who are not going to be serving on the board next year who would be probably great in that role. Anybody have any questions regarding the Education Equity Advisory Committee? Erica? I was just thinking um, that just like Travis had mentioned for the CCAC about acknowledging people's volunteer time, maybe through a certificate if we could do that for our other committees where we're asking people to donate their time, like budget and things like that, just to honor the commitment that they did, especially like outgoing um, our budget members. And I don't know if there's something even, I think that we could do it as a board level, maybe at one of our meetings, recognize people that are outgoing and have a section. I just think that, um, the more that we can just show our appreciation and maybe we can, it helps recruit others as well. Anybody else have any questions? All right, thank you. So we are exceptionally ahead of schedule. <laughs> uh, do do y'all have the this is the student representatives. Do y'all have uh, folks coming to celebrate your last board meeting that I should wait for? Or should we go to our next agenda item? Okay. Our next agenda item is, what's that? Okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to like leave, leave out somebody. All right. So I'm going to go over there. Because the board recognizes the value of student inputs on matters that, that are important, board members established the position of student representative to the board of directors, beginning with the 2018-2019 school year. Last June, Yvette Alonzo Garcia from Liberty High School, V. Godoy from Century High School, and Kaylee McGuire of Liberty High School 
were appointed to serve as student representatives to the board of directors in the Hillsborough School District. Throughout the year, Yvette, V, and Kaylee have invested countless hours studying board meeting materials and preparing to discuss agenda items, speaking to the interests of students not only during board meetings, but by advocating to legislators for adequate and stable school funding and representing the district at a variety of events. Yvette, V, and Kaylee have served as liaisons, maintaining open channels of communication between the board and students. Yvette, V, and Kaylee's terms of service end this month and we take the opportunity to thank them sincerely for their education or for their dedication and valuable services and wish them success as they complete their high school education and move forward to their future endeavors. The superintendent recommends that the board of directors recognize and thank student representatives Yvette Alonzo Garcia, V. Godoy, and Kayla McGuire for their dedication and valuable service to the Hillsborough School District. My door. My door. And at this time, I would invite any board members to make any comments that they would like to. Yeah. I think we're all going to say something. I just, I'm super happy to have all three of you be our representatives this year. I think also just coming back from COVID and re-engaging with students and in-person activities was really a nice to do this year and we have that opportunity, but also so rewarding. And I'm, I'm just so proud of all of you and I wish you the best in your endeavors and you all know where, where to find us and how to reach us and we're gonna miss you. I'd like to say congratulations to all of you as well on your high school graduations and your careers that you are setting out upon. Um, it was great to have you on board and hearing your comments um, and feedback from the schools. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm so impressed that you bothered to come to your last meeting um, instead of just being all done. So just kudos for that first. I see you. Um, and yeah, it's it's wonderful, all the things that you all um, have brought to the table and shared and been um, very gutsy and courageous and being willing to make sure your voice is heard. Um, that's something that has been very appreciated by all of us. And I'm so happy um, that you got to spend this year with us. I can't wait to see what you do. And also, um, we have been asked as a board to write letters of recommendation in the past, just so you know. So like, that's a thing. If you need one, just ask Mark. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your guys' service on the board. Um, you guys are like rays of sunshine and oftentimes a very dry and sometimes stiff boardroom. And so thank you for um, just the light that you all bring, the personalities that you bring, and just for your dedication to, to serve the students of our district. And you guys are going to do amazing things. So super proud of you and thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really been a pleasure. It's such a nice role to have voices from inside of the school sharing directly what's happening with the board. And uh, you're all such wonderful people. Um, now, no, not all of you are graduating, though, right? One of you is, we, we could maybe convince you to extend your term somehow. No, no we're, I'm sure we're going to have wonderful folks next year, but we'll, you know, I'm sure you'll still be around in the um, in the community and we'll get to hear wonderful things that you're working on your senior year and for the other others you know we're very excited to see what you what how you positively impact the world in ways big and small so best of luck and best wishes they came even though and they, they didn't even know they're getting a plaque but they came anyway so yes uh it was great to see both kelly and v at graduation yes there's a great picture of me and Nancy would be somewhere that I saw. I don't, did we get a picture? I think maybe we got a picture with Kaylee, but I can't remember. Oh, very nice. Okay, excellent. And then we'll, we'll, we'll all compete to be the one to give you your diploma next year at that. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for, uh, it was really, uh, you guys have been a great class of students. Um, Lisa, Janine Salman, Kim Strelchen were very, adamant that we should be adding student representatives to the board and it didn't work out for longer than I thought. it should. So I'm glad that we were able to implement it. I'm glad to have had you guys as a tremendous class of uh, student representatives with us. 
um, yeah, keep in touch. We'll see you out there in the world. I, I we love seeing um, all of our previous reps out there. Um, and, you know, uh, don't be surprised if somebody reaches out and asks you to speak at like their campaign kickoff. Cause I've done that before too. Although I'm not, I'm not running anytime soon. So, uh, so yes, thank you very much, uh, for your service. And, um, it's easy to mistake of it as a graduate. I made the same mistake too. You're so accomplished and composed. It feels like you're a senior, but we get it. Oh, Mike wants to get it. Yeah, uh, several years back, there it, it really was. It was uh, Lisa, Kim, and Janine that had this idea that we we need to have student voice on the school board, and um, it took several years to pull that off. But they were very persistent. If you don't know, Lisa's fairly persistent, and um, when that when this idea finally came to be, um, the three of you are exactly what we pictured. The manner in which you have contributed and you've provided insight to what the school experience is, what's important to you and your peers. That is exactly what we pictured. And ju I just wanted to thank you for being such stellar representatives of the district. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Yvette, B, and Kaylee, I wanted to thank you for, um, Mike, thanks for stealing what I was going to say. You're exactly <laughs> what um, um, student reps are um, on the board to be uh, positive um, examples of your school. Um, you are exactly what we, we we look for in student representatives. You were positive. You were um, great examples of what um, your school wants to to highlight. And um, it was a pleasure working with all three of you. And um, don't don't erase my phone number from your phones. <laughs> and I expect to hear from you. And I want a picture of that plaque on your dorm room wall okay. and, uh, got, because you already said it. Okay. So I expect that. I move in August, so that's okay. going to be very soon. So. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. And um, thank you. You will have uh, representative time at the end, but do you guys have anything you want to add here? Just wait to the end. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we are an hour ahead of schedule. I think we do. We, I think we just recess for an hour because, like, this has never happened before. Things go so quickly down here. Yeah. It's, it's um, just just so that we know for a regular session, um, my family is here because it's my last meeting, but my son is here also. He's doing double duty as a scout and a son. And one of his uh, merit badge requirements is to record what he sees at a, as a public at a public government meeting oh. um, and particularly pay attention to different points of view that are uh, discussed. So if anybody has any arguing they want to do tonight would be a great time. <laughs> That's all just okay. for later. All right. Thank you. Can I ask an agenda question? Again? Sure. So where on the agenda are we actually approving the budget? Uh, I guess that's wrong. No, there, there was, there, uh, where were the, yeah, I remember seeing that last night in the packet. I thought it happened during the budget hearing, but it didn't. Right, so but it didn't happen in the budget hearing. Did I mess that up again? Is it four? Uh, I didn't know if just appropriations was approving the entire budget, if that was something separate. Yeah, on the on the agenda, it's just presented, but I don't know if we're going to approve it. Michelle, what do you Michelle, we're open to suggestion. I recommend that we add yeah, adding in. Add an item to the agenda to adopt yeah, budget there, resolutions. That'd be there great. was a motion. Uh, there was a motion in the budget hearing. I think we skipped that. It wasn't on. Wasn't on this thing. Yeah, in the packet on pay. All right. So, do I need to reopen the hearing? This is the budget committee. The school board that approves it. So we would have closed the hearing, and then mm -hmm. taken this action as part of. So it's on page five of the packet. Yeah. I remember I saw it. Yeah. yeah the, the resolution, everything is included in the packet that would have accompanied uh, the action item. Yes. Now I see. 
But I'm wondering, is it a motion that we do during our budget hearing as that body, or do we do it as a regular session? It's all the same body. Well, so I you mean, can, you yeah, know. make the action as the board. You don't have to recess to do that. We don't that. have to recess. But we were supposed to have done it back then. Yeah. Like, or at least we should, I think the hearing was to hear from the public, and now, and we should have taken action there, and we didn't, yeah. So we should reopen and, right. and get it done. There's no need for a hearing because we still have nobody. Right. Okay. So would anybody like to make the motion on page five? I just want to clarify that we can, we're doing that and it's still. Uh, it's not the, the budget committee doesn't approve the budget. The board approves the right, budget. So we we're in a work session versus a regular yeah, we, session. We take action matter. work sessions from okay. time to time. I just to yeah. Check. It's, it's not common, but it's not forbidden. Okay. It, we have we have taken action in work sessions before. Um, okay, then I move that the board of directors adopt a resolution to adopt the 2023-24 budget, appropriate the 2023-24 budget, and impose 2023-24 taxes and categorize the levy as shown in the June 20th, 2023 board meeting packet. Second. It's been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Allen that the board of directors adopt the resolutions to adopt the 2023-24 budget, appropriate the 2023-24 budget, and impose the 2023-24 taxes and categorize the levy as shown in the June 20th, 2023 board meeting packet. Is there any further discussion? Good catch. Well, it gives us something to do at least. Um, I wanted to say, uh, I think that the budget is excellently prepared and reflects our community's values. So I wanna thank our team our budget committee members who worked hard on this document. Um, I want to mention that I appreciate uh, Michelle and others in her team answering questions that I had about the budget throughout the process. Um, in the future going forward, I these are really large numbers and because we're a large district, uh, but every, every little bit counts and makes a difference in the students of the district's lives. And we see that when we're out in the classrooms. And so, um, I think it's very meaningful. And I think going forward at our August retreat, I have a number of topics I'm gonna to raise with Mark and Nancy when they're putting the agenda together that I'd like to, to perhaps just discuss with that when we have a lot more time. But one of the things is I would like to understand more, and I've talked with Michelle a little bit about some of this, the, about why the district has chosen not to have a local option funding source and whether that's something we may want to consider if we ever have a downturn in state funding going forward. So right now I feel good about this budget because of the uh, the last year of ESSER funds and uh, um, the state funds that we have that we're able to meet the needs of students. Uh, but I do want to make sure that we're able to on an ongoing permanent basis. So that's a discussion for the future. But right now I think we have a lot of really exciting programs in here. And so I'm glad to be able to support Any other comments? Yeah, great job uh, on the budget document and great job on all of the uh, claims we get over our budgeting process. I know we won awards, right? So um, you guys clearly are very good at your jobs and we appreciate that you've chosen to work here in Hillsborough. Thank you, Chair Watson. I'd also like to back it up even further and thank everyone who participated in the strategic plan development because that really informed a lot of what we have in this document. It's also included in there. So Beth um, Grazer left that work for us and that just is going to guide our work for the next four years. So thank you everyone. Rose, can you please call the roll? Lisa Allen. Aye. Sheehan Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. Oh, do we say that? Yeah, do we have to say that part? Be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Hillsborough School District 1J hereby adopts the budget for the fiscal year 2023-24 and the total of $428,168,941 now on file at the District Administration Center, Hillsborough, Oregon. So it is resolved and it is moved. Good catch, Patrick. Uh, all right. Anything else uh, for the work session? 
Um, we do have a less than one hour meeting, you think, Rose? July 11th, which we generally not done a meeting in July before, where we will swear in Patrick for his new term and a vet for her new, new term or for her term. And she and I will get together on the Friday before that, I think, Thursday before that, something like that, um, before she leaves town. To your point about the, to, to, for everybody uh, in general, the retreat, if you have items you would like to make sure are covered in the retreat, get them to Rose, you know, sooner than later. Sheehan's going to be gone. I'm leaving country the 21st and not coming back till the Sunday before the retreat. So I'll have a computer, but um, so we'll have to figure out how we conduct the agenda planning meeting for that, Rose and Travis. So, all right. If there's nothing else, we'll be adjourned for 50 minutes uh, till the regular session. Thank you. All right. I will call this uh, regular meeting of the Hillsborough School District 1J to order. We'll begin today as we always do with the flag salute. For those of you who may not be with us, the flag is in the back of the room. The flag salute to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God. Indivisible, As we gather here today, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge that our district service area is on the occupied traditional homelands of the Atfalati Indigenous people, lands we now call Washington County and the state of Oregon. We honor the Indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homelands we stand on, the Tualatin Kalapuya, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Malala, Bands of the Chinook, and many other indigenous nations of the Columbia River. We remember these communities. We honor their legacy, their lives, and their ancestors. We recognize the urban indigenous first native peoples communities living in the metro area, which includes over 400 tribal nations. The Hillsborough School District is committed to the recognition and education regarding tribal and local history and working with our local tribes in partnership. At this point, I would love to entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I move that the board of directors approve the agenda as printed. Second. It's been direct, uh, moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Allen that the board of directors approve the agenda as printed. Is there any discussion? Is there anyone in opposition? The agenda is approved. Next up, we have audience time. We do have someone who would like to speak with us this evening. So I have a sheet I need to read. Public participation in board meetings is covered by policy BDDH. Visitors who wish to speak before the board must complete an intent to speak card available at the top of the HSD homepage or at the table at the entrance to the boardroom and submit it via Google form, email or in person to the executive assistant of the board of directors, Rose Roman. Commenters should include their name and if speaking for an organization, the name of the organization. A spokesperson should be designated to represent a group with a common purpose. Up to three minutes at the board's discretion will be allowed per comment. Commenters, commenters may offer objective criticism of district operations and programs, but in public sessions, the board will not hear comments regarding any individual district staff member. Commendations involving staff members should be sent to the superintendent. Channels for the board's review of legitimate complaints involving individuals include board policy KL public complaints. If appropriate, the board chair will connect the visitor with the administrator to receive comments regarding personnel. Any hearing conducted before the board regarding personnel shall take place in executive session. Comments aimed at state and federally protected classes shall be prohibited. Anger, rudeness, ridicule, obscene or profane language, impatience, lack of respect for others, and personal attacks are not acceptable behavior. 
Demonstrations in support or opposition to a speaker or idea are not permitted. The board thanks all visitors for their presence and appreciates the input of our community members. We have one person so far. Okay, one person so far. Uh, Brandon, oh, sorry, got a spot. Brandon Carlisle, welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the school board, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. I stand before you as a concerned parent seeking to shed light on a recent incident that has caused unease within our elementary school community. It was brought to my attention by my first grader on a Thursday night in the month of June that the children were encouraged to dress up as rainbows Friday. I would like to stress the point that there was no notification from the school about this upcoming spirit day. And while I understand that the intent behind this event may have been well-meaning, it is crucial that parents be kept informed by the school about such activities, especially when they relate to such sensitive subjects. As we all know, the month of June is widely recognized as Pride Month, a time when the LGBTQ plus celebrates and advocates for rights. While inclusivity and diversity are important values that we should instill in our children, it is equally vital that parents have the opportunity to engage in open and meaningful conversations with their children about such topics on their own terms. Parents should also be made known prior to such events so they can make the best choices for their children regarding involvement. Rosedale Elementary has always respected all religious beliefs, which is why Halloween, Christmas, and even birthdays are not allowed to be celebrated. Pride Month should be no different. I have already spoken with the principal and I appreciate her willingness to listen when I brought this matter to her attention. She assured me that she would reflect on the concerns I raised. However, I believe it is crucial for the entire school board and community to be made aware of this incident and the importance of clear communication with parents for all events. Our schools play a vital role in shaping the minds and values of our children, and it is essential that they remain neutral grounds, free from any covert political agendas. While it is admirable to promote tolerance and acceptance, it is inappropriate to do so via political agendas and should never be done at the expense of parental involvement and transparency. I respectfully request that the school board takes this incident seriously and implement measures to ensure that clear communication with parents is upheld as a priority. By doing so, we can foster an environment where parents feel valued, respected, and included in their children's education. I firmly, firmly believe that our school board has the best interest of our children at heart. And by addressing this incident, we can further strengthen the bond between the school, the parents, and the community. Let us work together to create a learning environment that promotes open dialogue, respect, and inclusivity, while ensuring that our schools remain neutral spaces for education, free from any political agendas. Thank you for your attention, and I trust that you will take this matter into careful consideration. Thank you. Is there any other audience time? Okay. Next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Would anybody like to make a motion? I move that the board of directors approve the consent agenda as printed. Second. It's been moved by Director Allen and seconded by Director Ward that the board of directors approve the consent agenda as printed. Is there any other discussion? Is there any objection? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Just discuss, just, just a, a shout out to uh, Audrea. Wanted to thank her for responding to the email that I had and the questions that I had surrounding this policy on expulsion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess we're, yeah. I, so also as part of the consent agenda, I believe, I uh, just wanted to make a note. I can't remember what page it was on, but like where we're describing the roles. I just, I remain grateful to be in a district big enough where we can capitalize on economies of scale and not have you know, one person doing Rose's and Kathy's and Beth's job, but still small enough where, um, you know, where we still feel the, our sense of community here. So uh, it's page 34. I see several people's names mentioned over and over again as a designated officer for different things. So still just a reminder that the next closest district to us is twice as big as we are, even though we're fourth, right? So um, we still have the same person listed many times in there in the consent agenda. So 
I just remain grateful to be in this community. Is there any objections to the consent agenda? Consent agenda passes. Next item uh, would be our action items. Uh, our first one is regarding the language arch adoptions we discussed last time. Travis, do you have any extra or anything you want to add to this for color? No, no questions. Um, clarification, uh, Monique, we did find out that the safety first curriculum is supplemental to the Goodhart Wilcox. So we'll be, the motion should be read as it appears in the agenda. Thank you. Uh, so we have two curriculum it's not just it's the language arts and health adoption that's right um so does anybody have any questions on any of those topics sure so travis so the the supplemental material is never included in adoptions is that the case we make a distinction between the core adoption and then supplemental materials that can be used to supplement it for a reason and so i believe if my memory serves me right the good Heart wilcox is the core adoption and then the safety first was brought in because the teachers preferred the way that they did the drug and alcohol piece was safety first so that's a supplement to the core adoption it would be like the difference between a core language arts adoption and then a supplemental novel or a text that we use um, that we purchase for students to read, but it's not part of the core um, textbook. Okay. And so are parents ever privy to that? Do they get do they the transparency on that? Is it part of like a syllabus or something yeah, it, like that? It would be on the high school syllabus, yes. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Would anybody like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Directors approve the proposed curriculum inquiry by design as provide as provider for grades 7 through 12 language arts curriculum, digital resources, teacher materials, and student resources. Second. It's been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Kim that the Board of Directors approve the proposed curriculum inquiry by design as provider for grades 7 to 12 language arts curriculum, digital resources, teacher materials, and student resources. Is there any further discussion? Patrick? Uh, I, again, appreciate the presentation last month, uh, how uh, our educators take such thoughtful care when they're considering these, and the feedback is often, you expect it to be mixed, but it's often very heavily for one particular uh, provider site that's good, and that uh, our discerning educators are able to come to a clear choice, so I feel good about approving this. Is there any other comments? Rose, can you please call the roll? Sorry, who's that second? The Sheehan? Yeah. Sheehan, yeah. Lisa Allen? Aye. Sheehan Kim? Aye. Erica Lopez? Aye. Monique Ward? Aye. Nancy Thomas? Aye. Mark Watson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next up, would somebody like to make a second or a motion about the health curriculum? I move that the Board of Directors approve proposed curriculum, Goodhart Wilcox as providers for high school health curriculum, digital resources, teacher materials, and student resources. Second. It's been moved by Director Allen and seconded by Director Lopez that the Board of Directors approve the proposed curriculum Goodhart Wilcox as providers for student health student uh, as providers for high school health curriculum, digital resources, teacher materials, and other student resources. Is there any further discussion? Yep, just have a, a comment. Again, thank you, Travis, for the information on uh, the safety first. And um, for this one, I will be voting no. And part of the reason on that um, is because of the safety first material. I did have the opportunity to go online and look at that material. And uh, my concerns for that was the, um, for the, the three of five series of lessons that I watched, um, it, it wasn't, it didn't seem like it went far enough to me in dissuading children, dis dissuading students to not uh, pursue an avenue of drugs. Um, for the one that I watched was, which was uh, the cannabis on there. And then having a statement of maybe postpone this while your brain develops was not 
to me a, enough of a deterrent to say, no, you shouldn't do this because your brain X, Y, Z. So that just things like that, that I saw that just concerned me. And I don't know what parts of this curriculum these teachers are going to choose to use, but that being uh, an option is not an option for me. Thank you for your board explanation. Any other discussion? Uh, Rose, can you call the roll? Lisa Allen? Aye. Sheehan Kim? Aye. Erica Lopez? Aye. Patrick McGuire? Aye. Monique Ward? Opposed. Nancy Thomas? Aye. Mark Watson? Aye. Motion carries. Our second action item is regarding a contract with Oak Street Campus. I think Casey has some additional information, and there's quite a bit of information in your packet as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is to accommodate the move of Hillsboro Online Academy 912. Um, for those of you that have been to Oak Street Campus, the, the main entrance uh, is a older converted classroom. So within that is this, the area we're talking about is within that classroom to put some office spaces for staff coming over to be able to administer the problem with our move of uh, programming from Peter Bosco and uh, Miller Education Center East um, to accommodate for that. We have gone through a design. There's a, a outline design in your packet. There's also some additional information uh, with um, the bidding documents. We did our standard bidding for this project. Uh, feel confident in the contractor that was the low bid. I'm happy to answer any additional questions or clarifications uh, for this project. So any other questions? Erica? Hey, Casey, I think we asked this last time about like the bids that we're getting, but I just had a question about if the, is the, do we have like a list of qualified bidders that we go to or is we it do. an open bid? No, we, we did. We sent this to our pre-qualified bidder list, which is pretty extensive. I will say at the time of year it is for us, and that that is kind of on us a little bit, you know, is this one of these added later added projects mm -hmm. is likely why uh, we received the two. I don't necessarily have any concerns about the two that we received since we've done so much work with them historically, yeah. but we did reach out to our standard uh, list of vendors. And how often is that list open to get people recertified to be on? Them? Yeah, um, we did it right at the very beginning of the bond okay. and we just did it a uh, month ago, month or so ago. And we had a lot of interest that we um, updated and added to that list. So it's pretty extensive. Okay. That, that was just my concern. I know like we have great um, relationships and also great work from these folders, but I would like to see more competition yeah. for our project. So that's why I was just checking if we, how often we're opening it up to get new contractors on our list. Yeah, we just did. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, they are familiar names. So I do appreciate them having an interest in working with the district again. Is there any other discussion? Anybody like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Directors award the contract for Oak Street Campus office remodel to five-star builders in the amount of $246,325. Second. It's been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Allen that the Board of Directors award the contract for the Oak Street Campus office remodel to five-star builders in the amount of $246,325. Is there any further discussion? Rose, can you please call the roll? Lisa Allen? Aye. Sheehan Kim? Aye. Erica Lopez? Aye. Patrick McGuire? Aye. Monique Ward? Aye. Nancy Thomas? Aye. Mark Watson? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Next up on our action items. Uh, oh, Beth, in the reopening of the interdistrict transfer window for Hillsborough Online. Yes. So we have never done this before. Um, this is new territory for us. Typically, as you know, we uh, in March bring to the board the proposal that we do participate in the interdistrict transfer process, which allows us to both bring in students from other districts and release them to other districts if that's what they want to do for the upcoming year. And um, 
during that process, we always define a window within which those transfers need to occur. And we always pick May 15th. Uh, we have an interesting situation this year, specifically with Hillsborough Online Academy, because Portland Public Schools decided to close their online school. And they've been very public about the fact that they are not denying the release of any of their students who wish to go to other online schools. In fact, they're recommending other online schools to their families who were previously accessing the PPS virtual option, including Hillsborough's. Um, now, it is interesting and perhaps a little curious that um, during our open window that we identified, there were only two requests that came in from Portland. However, we have had some come in after the fact. And just knowing that we can't dictate other districts' timelines or how quickly they may act on these certain things, we thought it might be best to simply open a second window that was just for Hillsborough Online that would kind of allow us to capture those students who might want to come over from PPS without um, having to them face the barrier of running up against the hardship process, which really doesn't even allow for a situation like we're seeing with PPS. So we decided to go ahead and, and, and say 50. We know that's probably way more than we'll need, but that keeps us from having to come back to you again and again to potentially consider doing that in future months. Any questions? Yes, for clarification. So I just, sorry, I just, apologies. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Yep. We have a deadline. They made recommendations. We were included among the rep rec recommendations and options for other students. Many of those students missed our deadline. Am I correct so far? Mm. You're tying us together with Portland too much. So well, our our interdistrict transfer decisions are simply based on what works for us. Um, we don't necessarily consult with other districts. I mean, we do try to align typically with Beaverton because they're closest to us and Forest Grove, but um, we didn't we didn't do anything specific for PPS in our regular process. Totally it's makes just sense. That we we understand that this is the scenario with them right now, mm -hmm. and that they're still are PPS students coming our way, but simply because their school closed down does not qualify under the state's defined hardship laws. And because our window has closed, that's the only avenue that exists for students. And rather than put them in a position where they either have to maybe get a little creative with their reasoning or go somewhere else, we would love to welcome them here, but we would need to take action to do so. And they announced and they announced the closure of their online academy after our window had closed, right? Roughly around the same time. It was very they close. did it in the springtime. I'm not exactly okay. sure of the timing, but yeah. So I, I think my, my question was really about making sure um I love all children and I want all children to have what they need. That is clear. However, I want to make sure that we're protecting the children who live in this district first. Right. And we've already had that. Are there any students that we've had from Hillsboro who have missed the cutoff and who are now being afforded the same opportunities? That, that's actually, it's a really good question because, um, and it does, it, it does require a moment of pause. And I, I did say that to the current principal and the incoming principal a couple of times, because the interesting thing is our in-district process, we have a lot more discretion and there are times when the staff will interview a student and their families and make a determination that they don't feel like maybe that's the right placement for them. Maybe they don't feel that they would be successful there for any number of reasons. So for in-district students, there have been times when they've said, well, you know, this might not be the right place for you. When it comes to inter-district transfers, we have to be, we have to stay out of that process. It's a it's a slots based process. If you apply and there's a slot, you get in. So, but it, at this point, there are no slots because our no at this our program is closed. Is it not? It's just it's not it's not that there are no slots. There's the inter district window is closed because the window is closed for, for students that. from other districts. But students, official. but our students could still choose to go to HOA next year. Yeah, they can yeah. apply. I mean, they have to apply. Yeah. It's it's just a different process. Yeah. But yes, theoretically, theoretically we always have to give any open spots to our our students first and then to anyone from the outside next. 
And uh, you don't expect 50. We got three outside the window or so. Even at 50, we're way, 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 even if HOA increased by 50 students, we're still way under the pandemic high of what HOA was, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. well, well, well under. Yeah. Yeah. I think probably, Nancy, the thing to know is that students transferring in from another district will not take the place or diminish the opportunity of any of our own students to attend HOA. No, but I just also wanted to clarify then for inter-district, if there's a slot, they get in. But for us, we have a kind of vetting a little bit with our students. It's not as clear as like if there's a lot a slot you get in. There's a little bit more. Yeah, of a- that's why we we don't take it lightly. Mm-hmm. We don't take it lightly to do this, but at the same time, understanding the inter- transfer laws are extremely complicated in the state. <laughs> very, very, very well, complicated. I'm, um, I'm, so I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. Have to go against the law just to get what they think is right for their kids, right? I'm, I'm not disagreeing with transfer laws. What I'm talking about is if we treat children in our own district in some way, and we're making an exception for another district, which I appreciate the fact that we're trying to help their students, but are we evaluating those students the same way we do our students? Right. So if if we, I'm just saying that mm-hmm. if we can unilaterally interview a child and a parent and say, I don't think you're right for this academy, then we should do the same thing for any incoming student, regardless of where they come from. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for equity yeah, so that we're evaluating all students the same. I want to afford these children the opportunity to to participate in our academy if it's appropriate for them to do so. But But if we don't look at that, then we won't know. And then therefore we should not do this same process for anybody else. Right. It should be, if you want to sign up, you should be accepted. When we opened the interdistrict process in our normal procedure, none of those things were in place. It was, we had slots. You could have chosen HOA. You could have chosen Fire Night Creek. You could have chosen whatever. Mm-hmm. And we had X amount of slots at each of those schools. I remember that. And if you were out of district and you chose to go to one of those, you were into one of those, yeah. right? And then the process for in district is if you decide that I would rather not go to my neighborhood school, we do an evaluation to see if that non neighborhood school is right for you. So just different processes. So th- this this what we're considering today is not a change in the inter district transfer procedures. It's just to allow more inter district transfers to come in for one specific school. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're allowed, you're allowed to open another window so long as there are no pending requests. Gotcha. Lisa? So, um, I was just going to say, uh, essentially what you were saying, it's it's two different things, really. And so the, the inter-district transfer issue with the slots is one issue. Um, it doesn't sound like it would really have much impact in terms of like staffing at HOA and things like that. So um, getting more students for our district doesn't seem like there's much of a downside. But it also sounds like perhaps there's some interest in learning what is our process for students within the district. And that might be something to put on an agenda moving forward. Like, what does that process look like? Like, how how do students manage that process in our own district? Yeah. Erica? Oh, just thumbs up, right? (laughs) I do have a question, just a point of clarification. So um, in here, it's saying that the window would be rolling until and unless the 50 slots are filled. Would that not create um, staffing consideration kind of issues, or are, are we good with staffing if we're accepting students on a rolling basis? Um, Linda is the one who set that number, so I think she feels that they could absorb that. Currently, they have an upper um, to end each way because it hasn't had enough flow to it, um, either with our own internal students and if we have people that are going at the semester or then, like, so they can have a bit of a buffer. Okay. So right now, we feel comfortable in it, just like in winter school, and then we're just tight. Um, and I'm channeling my inner father right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but also, we look at um, how we Okay. okay, thank you. Patrick? Uh, yeah, just a couple of questions following on for Nancy's to make sure I understand. So um, <laughs> are, you, are you sharing with us that there is no lawful way under current state law for 
if someone wishes to join the online academy for us to assess whether online education will work for them before accepting them? Not if they live in a different district. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah. that seems... They would have to be... There's a list of reasons for hardship. You have to... And you would have to meet one of those criteria. One of those criteria is not simply my previous online school closed. That's the problem. You would have to say that you had a bullying situation or some other okay. safety situation or a childcare situation or, you know, the hardship rules. There's only about five of them that you can qualify under. Yeah. No, it just seems odd that if they weren't, if they didn't have any experience with online education, they came to us and said, I want to be part of your online education. That it's not lawful for us to say we want to make sure you have the infrastructure in place to for online education to work well for you uh, if we did that's what is commonly done with interdistrict but maybe something to follow up on later and then also but just on that so but if if they if somebody from our district during the approved interdistrict transfer window says I want my kid to go to Imlay and we have slots available at Imlay. We don't evaluate it. We just say so that so we're not treating the online school any differently than any of our brick and mortar schools. Yeah. Just a 10 second background. Right. We used to the interdistrict transfer process used to run almost exactly like the in-district. And we got applications and we reviewed all of them, whether they lived here, whether they didn't live here. And, you know, we as a district, I like to pride myself on the fact that we tried to be very student-centered, family-centered, and do what was best for the families. Some other districts just decided that they weren't losing any students, they didn't really care what your reason was, and they just didn't participate. And so why it's been codified into state law is to kind of force the hands of districts that were not playing ball with parents because parents wanted to have more choice and more options. And so the laws were changed to put these things in place so that in hopeful in hopes of reducing discrimination against families based on a variety of factors that were considered too um, non-standard from one district to the next. So it doesn't make a lot of sense and that's why it's complicated. They were trying to fix a problem. It kind of created some other problems. Um, but we still like, we still try to remain as student and family centered as possible and try to get the kids in the very best placements that we can so yeah another question sorry uh, i forgot my other question for the moment so <laughs> someone else is glad we can move forward any other <laughs> questions well yes <laughs> I <don't know>. poor <laughs> nancy i apologize oh, that's all good. um if the students are we presuming or can you confirm that all students that are enrolling in our program were also in their program we're also I'm meaning Portland Public School had an online program. Right. Were all of the ones that they want to enroll that are asking for transfers, were they enrolled in the Portland Public Schools online academy? There were only two that came in through the previous window, and I believe they had both gone to the online academy at Portland. What I'm getting to is that if we admit a child who has never participated in the online academy and then we have problems, what will we do? Uh, there are two ways that one can end an interdistrict transfer, and that has to do with um, attendance, which is difficult with an online academy. Um, and I've had the luxury of being out of the weeds for so long, I'm trying to remember the other. Uh, I think it's a behavior, whether you've had multiple suspensions. So um, otherwise, if you're meeting all the other criteria of, of enrollment, then we can't really revoke your transfer. Again, my concern is just equity across. It just sounds like we're going to, I'm, I'm just concerned that we may have missed a student in our own district that wanted to go to our online academy but missed the day. They, it's, there's, they can still apply. And there's no deadline. And we have an appeal process for our in-district students too. So if they're told no and they truly believe they belong there, we have okay. we have multiple ways they can rectify that situation. Okay. So. Could you could you maybe at a future meeting bring us the statistics on how many students were wanted to switch schools inside our district and were denied asked not to? Okay, thank you. I'll give up the ghost. I just wanted to make sure that we were 
No, it's yeah, fine. It's any student industry has that. It's kind of an interesting topic. It can yeah, get real weedy, topic. but we can certainly go over it more at another time too. Any other questions or somebody ready to make a motion? I move that board of directors adopt the secondary inter-district transfer window for Hillsboro Online Academy. Second. It's been moved by Director Allen and second by Director Lopez that the board of directors adopt the secondary inter-district transfer window for Hillsboro Online Academy. Is there any further discussion? Rose, can you call the roll, please? Lisa Allen. Aye. Shannon Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Nancy Thomas. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. Next action item involves the adjusted appropriations. Michelle, we see this in our packet. Anything you want to add for us? No, other than this is something that we kind of bring at the end of every school year to identify where there have been fluctuations within our budget um, throughout the year. I know that I have answered a few questions for folks um, and happy to answer any more that we have tonight. Are there any other questions? It's on page 44. Would somebody like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Directors approve the adjusted appropriations for special revenue funds as listed. Second. It's been moved by Director Kim and seconded by Director Ward that the Board of Directors approve the adjusted appropriations for special revenue funds as listed. Is there any further discussion? Sure. Just like, a, again, to say thank you to Michelle. Um, and Beth, I missed you on the last round, but thank you as well um, for um, all the questions that I threw your way and, and the responses. I appreciate that. Um, just getting some more information on the budget and the budget process um, and some specific line items. So thank you. Any other any other comments or discussion? Rose, can you call the roll, please? Lisa Allen. Aye. Sheehan Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Nancy Thomas. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. Next action item regards a real property transaction. So I move that the board of directors approve the purchase and sale agreement and closing of the sale of this property after completion of due diligence and final negotiations. Second. It has been moved by me and seconded by Director Allen that the board of directors approve the purchase and sale agreement and closing of the sale of this property after completion of due diligence and final negotiations. Is there any further discussion? Uh, just to say that in the... Uh, board elections that just concluded, I was asked about our career and technical education programs a lot, and I often shared a lot of really exciting things we're doing. I think we have a really forward-looking team here in Hillsborough, a lot of great programs. But And when I was asked well, what room for growth is there, I, I said I think there's room for growth in the, the health field. And so I'm uh, pleased to be able to uh, take this vote today in something that sets us up toward moving in that direction. Is there any further discussion? Rose can call the roll, please. Lisa Allen. Aye. Sheehan Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Nancy Thomas. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. Next up on our action items, Jordan uh, Chromebook and peripherals. You'll notice if uh, you look in your packet, the intent to purchase was updated uh, to include our notice of uh, publication of this cooperative purchasing agreement. Um, and so this is to buy additional elementary Chromebooks, uh, both to uh, replenish our backstock, backstock of devices and also to deal with uh, some of the future repairs and so forth. All right. Is there any other questions for Jordan on this? Yes. Good. Um, just real quick, uh, how far into the future does this allow for the with the rapid change of technology? So in other words, how many Chromebooks are we buying? Are we going to end up, I'm sorry, are we going <laughs> to end up with um, Chromebooks and technology has changed 
so rapidly that we that changed before we used up what we bought. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I got what you're getting to. Um, one nice piece of the Chromebook is that um, because everything, the, the vast majority of things on it are all browser-based, um, so they're just operating within the Chrome browser, not actually running from the device. Uh, we're guaranteed a certain amount of years of updates from Google on those. Um, and so we're about three years in, uh, two to three years in, and that'll give us another uh, three years of these same models, um, three to four years of updates. Sometimes they extend that um, as they come close. It sort of matters just on the processor and those pieces, if they're able to continue pushing additional updates to those devices. Um, and by that time, we'll be ready to... Um, We'll be right at our point of actually replacing some of the devices. Um, our secondary ones were bought first. Um, so we plan to buy those um, here in a couple more years uh, to replace the devices that we currently have. Um, any of the ones that we currently have, there it would be nice to have additional devices in classrooms. Um, so as students um, either have a device that isn't charged that day or um, other issues that come up, um, that we would have even more additional devices and sort of as we replace those um, with the next larger purchase, we'll be able to do that. Um, these ones help us. We um, probably cut our, uh, based on past one-to-one uh, -one rollouts that other districts had done, we based our um, overage uh, probably a little too slim um, and so we've run into some times where we've um, run out of devices, especially at the beginning of the year where we're getting others repaired um, and so forth. So um, this increases our what we use as overage. So as items need repaired or we need to swap out devices for students where we have enough on the shelf to do that. Thank you very much. So. Any other questions? So this isn't like our big student distribute it's just like i think situation page says under three hundred thousand. this is just some machines gotcha okay any other questions anybody like to make a motion i move that the board of directors acknowledge the notice of intent to purchase chromebooks peripherals and services from oetc by use of a cooperative purchasing agreement under the authority of the state of Oregon, ORS 279A215 permissive cooperative procurements. I will second. It's been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Allen that the board of directors acknowledge the notice of intent to purchase Chromebooks, peripherals, and services from OETC by use of a cooperative purchasing agreement under the authority of the state of Oregon, ORS 279A.215 permissive cooperative procurements. Is there any further discussion? Rose, can you call the roll, please? Lisa Allen? Aye. Shane Kim? Aye. Erica Lopez? Aye. Patrick McGuire? Aye. Monique Ward? Aye. Nancy Thomas? Aye. Mark Watson? Aye. Motion carries. Next up, a similar one is just you can't get enough from OTC. Is this the same thing, or you just got to get some from CDW? Things. Basically, yeah. Uh, the uh, exact same thing at secondary, but we did end up when we purchased our one-to-one -one devices in different years during the pandemic, we ended up not being able to get the same model um, delivered in a timely manner. Um, so we did end up with different devices at our secondary and elementary. So this is to do the accomplish the same thing, um, but with our secondary device, which is a Lenovo device that we get from CDWG. Is there any other questions? Questions for Jordan on this one? Would like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Directors acknowledge the notice of intent to purchase Chromebooks, peripherals, and services from the CDWG by use of a cooperative purchasing agreement under the authority of the State of Oregon, ORS 279A.215, Permissive Cooperative Procurements. Second. 
It's been moved by Director Allen and seconded by Director Kim that the Board of Directors acknowledge the notice of intent to purchase Chromebooks, peripherals, and services from CDWG by use of a cooperative purchasing agreement under the authority of the State of Oregon, ORS 279A.215, Permissive Cooperative Procurements. Is there any further discussion? Rose can call the roll, please. Lisa Allen. Aye. Sheehan Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Nancy Thomas. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. Next up, um, just a side note, like if a uh, reminder, we decided that we are just procedurally, since we're not required to adjourn and convene a uh, local contract review board that we, we are the local contract review board. We've decided to just act in that capacity without all of the ceremonial. So the next one, the next one involves us acting in the capacity of the local contract review board. Jordan, would you like to add any context here? This uh, goes back to some of our Chromebook tracking in that um, over the last few years, we've had quite a bit of different uh, uh, repairs and tracking of devices going in and out. And so um, we ran into an issue last year with the amount of devices that needed repaired after students came back from the summer. Uh, this year, we are collecting all of those. And part of that um uh, came about some additional ways to track those within our inventory system um, so that as uh, schools collect those, it gives them sort of ability to know uh, which uh, like bin and which Chromebook within a storage uh, location, it belongs to a different each individual student if they wanted to do that um, and be able to go grab that for uh, when the student needs to check it back out at the beginning of the school year. There's a number of other uh, uh, new uh, uh, pieces of this module that increase our ability to track devices. Um, and so we wanted to add this on to our current help desk system. And so as part of our renewal of our um, help desk system, uh, we were adding on this module so that um, Overall total renewal of that system is around 67,000 with the new module, 21,000 of that is the new module added on. Um, so to do that, we just needed to do the sole source procurement because we didn't want to at this time to go out for um, and review our entire help desk system and uh, bid that out um, at this point. Uh, we just wanted to buy the module to go along with a system we're already using. Thank you. Any questions for Jordan? Would somebody like to make a motion? I move that the Board of Directors acting in the capacity of the Local Contract Review Board approve the sole source procurement and exemptions from competitive bidding and authorize the purchase of the Incident IQ platform ticketing facilities and asset subscriptions from Incident IQ. Second. It's been moved by Director Allen and seconded by Director Ward that the Board of Directors, acting in the capacity of the Local Contract Review Board, approve the sole source procurement and exemptions from competitive building and authorize the purchase of the Incident IQ platform, ticketing, facilities, and asset subscriptions from Incident IQ. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> George, thank you. Your leadership on this has been phenomenal. This has not been an easy time period in our lives. You led us through the pandemic and the aftermath. And I just wanted to say thank you. This is a lot of work. Um, and sometimes I think we we kind of gloss over the fact that everything you just said is after significant amounts of work. And I am sensitive to that. And I just want to say a public thank you for all of your hard work and leadership. Thank you. The tech team has done a ton, and I appreciate that. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah. Slide the mic over. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, but I also wanted to mention that um, there's, um, I know that like all the schools collected the Chromebooks, but I know since I'm a senior that I'm going to be applying to scholarships and um, 
colleges throughout the summer doing my research and all of that. So I was also, um, you know, wanting to put it out there for the students who don't have access to electronic devices like Chromebooks. It would be difficult for them to, you know, start that research during the summer when they don't, when they have uh, the most availability. So um, maybe like as a note, I get that like Chromebooks, you know, break throughout the summer, but like um, make it like um, alone to like students throughout the summer, especially seniors or whatever grades you think they most need it. Um, and, you know, just to put it out there that, you know, there, there's um, seniors who uh, do need to start, um, you know, that college application essay. So um, it would be easier for them for the fall. But yeah, thank you. Any other discussion? I would just like to second that point. I think that's a great um, illustration of why we have our student reps on the board, mm -hmm. because this is the real life impact that they're highlighting. And so, I don't know, maybe there's a way that we can have like an agreement they sign if they choose to keep it because they know they're going to need it for scholarship applications or job applications or something. But there's a responsibility added if you decide to keep it over the summer. Um, our high schools do have a process where they can advocate and say they need it for the summer and they do a checkout process, much like a library book you would check out for the summer. So students can do that. So you are welcome to spread that word if needed. And we will do a better. This was the first year we did collect all of them. So we will do a better job next year of saying if there is a reason you need your Chromebook, make sure you check in with X, Y, and Z tech teacher or whatnot at the building. But you are able to do that and feel free to just head on back to school and ask them for your Chromebook. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear we have a process and just seconding with Erica, like this is exactly why we have students here. So like, as soon as you began speaking, I heard Michael, hmm, and I went, hmm, like that's a thing. So, right. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that we already have something in place to make that happen. It's like very great. Right. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion? I have read it already. Yes, I did. Uh, Rose, can you please call the roll? Lisa Allen. Aye. Shan Kim. Aye. Erica Lopez. Aye. Patrick McGuire. Aye. Monique Ward. Aye. Nancy Thomas. Aye. Mark Watson. Aye. Motion carries. That completes our action item section of the agenda. On reports and discussions, the financial report is in your packet. Michelle, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, thank you, Chair Watson. Nothing to add, really, other than just a quick four-page update on what's been happening in the business office and also our monthly cash flow statement. So I know there's a ton of numbers on a little white piece of paper and I'm happy at any time to answer questions when I have about that. Thank you. Any questions for Michelle? Um, on our consent agenda, we approved um, tuition rates for students who um, may be interdistrict transfers and for some reason, I'm curious, is that actually ever happened? Do we have any students who pay tuition? On occasion we do when there's students that actually belong to another district, but do want to participate at some level or activity or manner of coursework for our schools, but we can't claim state school fund for them. So usually it's incremental. It's usually not those big annual lump sums that you see in the tuition, but those are the, the figures that we base that on. Well, so it does happen from time to time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the financial report? All right, our next section is policies under first reading and you can see them all there and there's summaries in our packet or in our board area, uh, the policies are in the packet. I normally would say, direct your questions to Mike or whoever it says there, but what's that, five days, four days? What's left? Something like that. So uh, direct your questions to whoever's there and you know, maybe Mike. <laughs> um, so are there any questions about um right now the the policies yeah okay yeah i thought others might be curious about this so rather than doing it by email i'll ask now um so essentially when osba notices that policies need to be updated they share that with our administration they consider that whether it meets the needs of our district and then if it does it bring it to the board for approval um when there are optional osba policies do you, uh, as the superintendent, make the decision as to whether to recommend to the board those are omitted or presented? That happens in a couple different ways. We do talk about it in cabinet. Oftentimes, if we've had the optional policy, then we will roll it forward because that was the will of the board back in the day when it was first adopted. So typically, we have that conversation. 
Okay. I was curious about that generally, and then I noticed with the documentation, uh, documentation is really helpful, by the way, so I appreciate that. Um, on the program exemptions, there's in the explanation, it says coincidental with amending that policy, they're also uh, promulgating a, a new optional policy, ICB. So I wondered if we had decided not to recommend that to the board. Brian, do you, have you seen the optional one that accompanies that? I didn't know I had. There was one that people came in that was. Hey, people online can't hear you without the microphone. Um, there was one that came up optional that was about religious ob um, observances. Yeah. Yeah. And so that one is one that um, we have discussed in cabinet, but we have not moved because we have a lot of policies already that fit underneath that. So um, at this time, uh, we can bring it up definitely at a future work session or at a uh, retreat. But what we have already in place covers what that optional would state. Okay, that's good. No, thank you. And the board hasn't adopted that policy right now or whatever. Right, so it's not a policy we have in our... Right, okay. Any other questions about the policies on first reading? Next item is AR, and I will admit that I learned... I was this many days old when I learned this or finally realized this. So, But I do know that ARs are the operational staff of the district implementing our policy. That's how they do it. Um, we don't vote on ARs. ARs are just things we discuss from time to time. Uh, the ARs are not on a 30-day reading. The ARs are like, okay, this is the change and here it is. So uh, understanding that, okay, they're, we don't approve them. They're not on a 30-day reading. The, the time, I guess, to ask questions about ARs is today. So Hopefully you've had a chance to review this AR and if you have any questions about it. So after today, you can ask questions, of course, but uh, it, the AR is considered implemented as of today, submitted or whatever. So we can always ask questions about any policies or ARs in our book, right? So that's for sure. But the uh, including it here in the agenda and part of the presentation is not like, okay, now's your time to ask questions. It's sort of when you get it on Thursday and look at it in the packet, that just... I didn't realize that either. I kind of thought they were on 30-day review, just like the policies. Mistake, my bad. So uh, just a heads up. All right, that is the end of that portion. So we're doing a few things a little out of order because I think everybody realizes this is a somewhat unique board meeting. So uh, we are to HCA and HCU reports. Good evening, school board, Chair Watson, Superintendent Scott, and cabinet members. I am Melody Hansen, president of Hillsboro Classified United for just a few more days. Oh. It saddens me to report tonight that this will be my last school board meeting for me that I will be presenting a report for the Hillsboro Classified United. I have decided to not run for re-election for a third term. I have served in several board positions for HCU. My current position and the one that I am most known for is president. Prior to that, I have served as the bargaining officer and prior to that, secretary. I have also served on the board of directors for AFT Oregon from 2017 to 2023. I am excited to be returning to the classroom next fall. Yeah. I just don't know where yet. <laughs> um, that information is soon to come, I hope. Um, I would like to thank everyone that has supported me in this role and helped me along the way. I would like to send a huge thank you to my family for all of their support and sacrifices that they have made along the way as well. Um, Bethany Schaffner will be taking over the president position effective July 1st. Bethany has served as the secretary and before that she was the treasurer for HCU. Bethany has been on the board of directors for HCU for about 10 years. Bethany will be joined by Kira Hartzell and Carla Brokaw on the board. Kira will be the new bargaining officer and Carla will be the new treasurer. So last fall, I wrote a grant to first book an AFT to receive books for the students of HSD and other districts around Oregon. I was awarded this grant and it was a lot more than I had anticipated. 
I received 40,000 books and $10,000 to purchase even more books. Mm -hmm. I shared these resources with other districts and groups around Oregon. I was able to send books to Portland School District, Scapu School District, and the Evergreen Virtual Academy, formerly the Oregon Virtual Academy. I also had the honor to share books with the students and families in the McKinney Venture Program and other community groups. And this allowed us to put even more books in the children's hands around Oregon. Well, on June 3rd, with the help of some amazing volunteers, we were able to give away about 12,000 books. Nobody stood and counted them, this is our estimates. <laughs> um, to the students and families of HSD and Hillsborough. We had a lot of volunteers that helped support this project. We also had some amazing support from the district, and I would like to thank a few people that helped to support this project, and because of their support, this event was possible. And I do apologize if I forget anybody. <laughs> Um, I would like to thank the staff at the Facilities and Nutrition Services. Our delivery truck showed up early, and they jumped into action and had the truck unloaded before I arrived early. So thank you to everyone that helped unload the truck on May 4th. I would also like to thank Dave Peterson and Ray Laura and everyone at Facilities Warehouse that sacrificed valuable warehouse space and continue to do so, so that I could store the 40,000 books. I appreciate everything that Facilities did to help along the way and the use of the warehouse, so thank you. I would also like to thank Beth Grazer and the Communications Department for all of the advertising of this event. This information for this event went out in so many different formats and venues, so it was seen by many more people than I could have reached, so thank you. I would like to thank the print shop for the expedited printing and distribution of the flyers. This allowed more students and families to know about this event, and these families continue to share the event online the day of the event, so thank you. I would like to thank Pointer Middle School and the custodial staff at Pointer Middle School. The custodial staff, Ellen and Tony, not only had the school open for us for our event, they jumped in and helped sort and stack books and handle the table, setting them up and tearing them down, so thank you. I would like to thank the many volunteers that helped with moving, sorting, stacking, and loading, and unloading the books for the different events held to put books in the hands of our kids, so thank you. I would like to thank my husband for all of the driving and the delivery to help and help with the books. Without his help and support, we would not have been able to deliver books to the other districts around the state, so thank you. And just a side note, he had yesterday off, and he drove 11 hours to Port Orford to give out books. So I married a winner there. Um, so it was great to see many HSD staff show up for the books as well, including Kana and her son and other teachers and classified staff. We had some very happy children picking out books to own. For some, this was the first time they had owned books. Some were moved to tears of the excitement of being able to own a printed book for the first time ever. So to all of the volunteers and everyone else that helped make this event a success, thank you. Not only was this event possible, it was a success. So in closing tonight, I want to congratulate everyone that will be on the school board, the union board, or received a new position in the district. I wish you the best of luck and much success in this next adventure that you are about to venture onto. I would also like to wish the best of luck to those that are leaving the school board, the union board, or retiring. Best of luck on your next adventures in life. Seasons come and go, but your legacy is forever. Thank you and best wishes on your futures. And to everyone else, have a great summer. Recharge yourself for the next school year. And may this vacation bring lots of good memories. Happy summer vacation. Thank you. Normally we don't comment after things, but I think the board would like to thank you for all your years of service. Good evening, Chair Watson, Vice Chair Thomas, fellow school board members, and Superintendent Scott, and, and administrative leaders. My name is Mary Kay Babcock. My pronouns are she, her, Aya, and I'm the Hillsboro Education Association President. I'm a proud educator of 26 years. Happy belated Juneteenth. Happy Pride Month. Let us remember that gay rights movement advocates for the end to discrimination against LGBTQ plus people in housing, employment, 
health services, and other areas of life. Though society has come a long way, harassment and discrimination are still harmful to our students and to our staff. It's important to learn about the victories and losses of the LGBTQ plus acceptance and the issues that still remain in the modern world. Teaching the next generation to be more inclusive and to give LGBTQ plus children the representation they need to feel safe and supported in society is crucial. In some cases, it literally saves their lives. Thank you, HSD, for making our schools a safe place where all are welcome. Congratulations to our high school graduates. Thank you to all the educators that supported our graduates on their educational journey. It was inspiring to observe three of the graduation ceremonies and to hear the linguistic abilities in the speeches in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. The evidence of our dual language schools was vibrant. It was also with great appreciation to hear the land acknowledgement at Century's graduation. Being on the audience side this year, was a bit surreal. <laughs> I watched smiles emerge on faces as our community was welcomed by those efforts of inclusiveness and welcome for all. It was with love that I watched former students perform their musical tributes. And as Barbara Streisand would say, I may have even gotten a bit reclined at that <laughs> former student's solo as I taught her since she was in the elementary school. As a host parent, it was a moment of pride that parents on other continents were watching at 4 a.m. to hear their daughters say their name at an American graduation ceremony online. Yes, HH, yes HSD, you were on a worldwide stage. HEA had five students apply for the annual scholarship. We are pleased to announce that Janet McNamee and daughter of Holly McNamee and Wyatt Selleck, son of Tracy Everselleck, were our two recipients. They each received scholarship awards of $1,000. We look forward to all the future brings to these two seniors as they both will be attending Oregon State University. The HEA Prize Patrol team and I managed to deliver fresh flowers and a handwritten thank you note written by yours truly to all 53 of our contract teachers. This is exciting as these teachers have successfully accomplished their three-year probationary years and are now contract teachers. HEA also recognized our first year ever teachers. We recognized 93 first timers in the classroom with a Union Strong certificate and a $10 coffee card from Dutch Brothers because they deserve it. I remember those days as it's vital to provide acknowledgement of a job well done with guidance in the form of mentorship to retain our early educators. Last month, I spoke about our counselor workload. We are disappointed to hear that our counselors are unable to work more than three days remotely this summer. We feel strongly that they would be able to fill the, fulfill their job requirements and more if given the option. We are keeping a watchful eye on our counselor retention. Currently, we are aware that one counselor has submitted their resignation. As a result of our HEA HSD survey, we appreciate student services efforts to provide summer professional development. It's an opportunity that will provide training that will hopefully alleviate issues that were problematic this year. We appreciate that it will be optional and our members will be paid for their time this summer. We also appreciate student services efforts to provide summer professional development to our special education assistants to provide much needed safety training. We want our working conditions, which are our students' learning conditions, to be safe. We are hopeful that we can negotiate the Friday prior to Labor Day for family connections to be on Thursday. We feel that we would be able to truly connect with our families if we could do so prior to the Labor Day weekend. I've learned a great deal in this role this year, and I'm hopeful for the new leadership among our administrators, executive cabinet, and school board. Transparency, honesty, and accountability go a long way with us, and we look forward to working with you all next year. Lastly, I would like to wish the following members all the best. Thank you, Casey Walletich. You were very patient, kind, and helpful. Thank you, Lisa Allen and our student members. Your hard work and dedication to our district and our school board was much appreciated. Lastly, Superintendent Scott, thank you for your leadership, we hope that you have a very happy retirement 
And remember, if you miss the education scene, you always will welcome you as a second. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our last two agenda items are a little out of order and off script, so uh free to go over there. Okay. Thanks. I just want to say that this is not off script. This has been very scripted. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Just just unusual order. Just an unusual order for our board meeting. So uh this is the moment where we are going to remember and recognize the accomplishments and have a little fun with some of our people who won't be with us at the next board meeting. So uh first up. Lisa Allen was elected in 2015 and is now completing her eighth year of service to the Hillsborough School District as a board member. I've had the pleasure of working with Lisa for all six of my years on the board. Over that amount of time with someone, you tend to learn a few things about them. Like how as a kid, when you're in school, you were learned about earthquake drills. And when there's a low rumble, you should duck, cover, and hold on. If you've ever started, if you ever heard Lisa start a conversation really low and it starts to rumble if she starts talking in a low voice you should know that it's going to gradually get louder a little more animated a little quicker if you happen to be on the receiving end of one of these conversations the only advice i can give you is to duck cover and hold on before meeting lisa i had no idea that Punctuation used inappropriately and poor grammar was a triggering event for some board members. <laughs> Failing to use the Cornell comma or the Columbia, Columbia, which comma is it? It's Oxford. Oxford comma. <laughs> using Oxford comma. Using that inappropriately is definitely frowned upon. We can count on Lisa to correct us. Clearly the one B that she received that caused her to get the salutatory word was not from Mrs. Pre from Mrs. Prentice, was not in language arts. Uh, if you've been around me and Lisa for any amount of time, you would know that sometimes we can act like brother and sister. Uh, some would call it an argument. I would call it a discussion. Uh, and I will oftentimes find myself taking a position counter to how I really feel just to see if Lisa will take the bait. As an aside, she always does. It's kind of too easy but always very rewarding. Uh, but what comes with behaving like we're related sometimes is knowing that no matter how much we argue and disagree, and then we're always on the same side having dinner, knowing that we're family. All right, speaking of family, uh, we don't know how we're going to keep track of some of the events that ha happened at South Meadows or Witch Hazel. Um, Lisa is a walking billboard for her kids' activity, and so we will consult the district calendar to stay informed. Uh, something that Lisa taught me over the years was that sometimes board members need to be asking questions that represent what we hear in the community, and we should always represent the entire community, including the people with whom we might disagree or may not have voted for us. We often need to try saying what is on other people's minds. As such, her commitment to the community and education is incredible. Her whole family's effort to make Hillsborough a better place is unmatched. One of the things that uh, I think we all know about Lisa and we've watched her do it is she strives to strike that perfect balance between work home and serving the community with their civic engagement. And by doing that, she's left an, an incredible legacy in our community. Um, when we think about the legacy that Lisa is leaving, uh, it's around board leadership. Um, if you look across the district at the number of schools that her name is on, it's an impressive list. Her advocacy uh, for kids, for health resources, for gender equality, um, it's second to none. Uh, she's mentored countless board members, and uh, we have a we have a belief that if you want to be a board member, the first thing you should do is go have coffee with Lisa and talk to her about it. Um, the other thing that uh, we know about Lisa, she doesn't 
this is not grammatically correct, so I'm afraid to say it out loud. Um, <laughs> don't talk about it, be about it. Um, and that really describes Lisa. She is not one to uh, wallow in dysfunction. She's one to find a solution for it. And um, that, whether that's at the district level, at the state level, in an election process, um, over and over again, she will sacrifice personally and put in the effort to make things change. Lisa, thank you for everything you've done for our school district. You're leaving a legacy that you should be incredibly proud of. And you've ensured that all voices are heard and valued. And these things will serve our kids incredibly well as we move into the future. Thank you. Do I get to talk back? Do you get to talk now? Do I get to like talk? I just have one I have a retort. Oh. <laughs> Well, I was going to let other board members chime in first, but yeah. if, you, if you feel like you need to go now, yeah. That's I was just going to say, I've been waiting for eight years for what Mike would say, and I really was hoping that it was going to be one of the things he said to me when I was first um, running for school board, which was, oh, you are going to run for school board. I just thought you were a stalker from like the coffee chats and stuff. And so I thought he'd work that in, and I'm really disappointed and, and feel let down. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to add in recognition of Lisa's time on the board? Yes. I do. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Lisa, for all of your mentorship, your leadership and dedication. You have been just, I love also your spirit of just being efficient. That has taught me a lot about being board chair. I was so um happy to have that experience while you were on the board because you helped me a lot um to grow and to learn and i always don't want to cry but I... right right i, I know either <laughs> but it's so great um to have to have had a strong woman leadership here when i arrived made things easier thank you <laughs> lisa i um thought about a few things and I've come to the conclusion that I say thank you a lot and sometimes those words just don't cut it. So this was my personal attempt to you. First of all, T is for all the time you've invested. H is for the hard work you've expended over the last eight years. A is for all of the accomplishments that you have achieved. N is for never giving up. K is for keeping your head above water, no matter how difficult it was. Y is for the years of service you've committed to both us, the district, and your family. O is for outstanding leadership. I don't give that out lightly. And you is for we love you and we will miss you. And I have point X. Yeah. I just realized there's a box over here too. Anybody else? Uh, it was interesting when uh, Mike mentioned that uh, uh, when some friends last year in community members approached me and, and encouraged me to consider filling the vacancy on the board. I think the first person I actually did sit down and talk with and have coffee with in person was Lisa. And um, I think it's very true that it's not a compliment so much as just a reality that that no very few people do have as much dedication to the community as you and have left a legacy of, of making a difference and putting in place values that will serve our students for a long time and make them feel included and like they belong. So thank you for everything you stood for and um, your the students in your classes as a teacher are very fortunate going forward. Um, four years ago, I was also uh, one of the ones who had reached out to, to have coffee with you um, when I had decided to run for school board. And I remember sitting at Insomnia, which is the, our, all of our favorite coffee shops. <laughs> um, 
being absolutely terrified on the other end of the coffee table um, as I was chatting with you um, and um, you were grilling me with questions, um, which, <laughs> um, which at the heart of it, I knew um, you were evaluating me, my character and my intent of, of running for this position, knowing all the dedication that it took and knowing the passion that it took and wanting to make sure that my heart was in the right place. And um, I so appreciate that. Um, being on this side of the table with you, um, I find in you a friend and a mentor um, and and someone that I look up to and, and respect in, in the way that Mike said it of how you balance um, your civic engagement with your family life and your work life and doing all the things, which is not easy to do, um, but you do so, so graciously. Um, and, and I aspire to be like that as well. Um, so thank you, Lisa, for, for your dedication, um, your service, not only to this district, but to, to the members of this board. Um, you've, you've been a mentor, you've been a friend, um, and, um, you truly are leaving a legacy for for our district, and I hope that we can continue to carry forward um, all of the hard work that you've you laid the groundwork for, and that I hope we can make you proud in, in terms of um, everything that you've had your hands on. Uh, so thank you so much for for just your years of service and your friendship, and we will find a way to bring you back into this district um, as a teacher or as a as a volunteer or in some way just keep you involved um but we just appreciate you so much thank you we have openings on the budget committee and <laughs> so lisa i want to say thank you because again i was one that you reached out to when i uh, won my seat on this board to welcome me to this board and to discuss our common interests and passions and grammar is one of them. <laughs> um, and I really appreciate that time that you took and the things that you shared and the things that you value and the passion that you have. So thank you. We keep coming back to legacy and I think that's the perfect word. Um, and thanks Sheehan for bringing up like bringing that all back, like being on the terrifying other end of a coffee table with Lisa, because that's exactly what I did as well. Um, and really, uh, the lasting impact you've had on Hillsborough, hard to measure. Like you, Janine Salman, Kim Strelchin made a conscious effort to say, our board needs some more reflective use of our community, and you made it happen. So, thank you. But alas, Lisa is not the only uh only one for whom tonight is their last board meeting i'm sure all of you know tonight is the last board meeting of our beloved superintendent mike scott he's already burying his head <laughs> he loves it when we talk about him <laughs> after 14 years as the superintendent 25 years of working in hillsborough school district 36 years in education total mike is retiring i urge you all to look up the meeting packet tonight it's online uh, oftentimes things are hard to find in our packet, but the last two pages, scroll all the way down the bottom, is a situation page for Director Allen and for Mike. And I don't want to read them because we have too much other stuff to get to, but there's a lot of great stuff in there. So I encourage you to read the situation pages in our in our board packet. Uh, what I do know is that, Mike, you're going to have so much time on your hands in retirement that you've never had before. Uh with such a huge change in life circumstances, what we thought we would do is ask a few people to come here tonight and provide some ideas on how you can spend some of that time uh, because we know that it's going to be difficult for you. And first up is Aaron Carlson from the Hillsborough Schools Foundation. It's softy. All right, this being Mike's last meeting, I needed to offer some final help for your travels through retirement. Mike doesn't care for coffee. So to make your traveling a little bit easier, I've got some tips as you travel the seven continents. First in North America, you start your journey by visiting a cozy cafe in Seattle, Washington. 
It's known for its coffee culture, but you can enjoy a pumpkin spice chai while taking in the beautiful cityscape. In South America, you can fly to Sao Paulo, Brazil, where you can find a vibrant coffee scene, but visit a local cafe and savor a pumpkin spice chai while exploring the bustling seats of this lively city street. Mm -hmm. In Europe, head over to Amsterdam, Netherlands. It's renowned for its cafes. Carefully choose them. Um, find a quaint spot along the canal and indulge in a delicious pumpkin spice chai while admiring the city's pic- picturesque scenery. In Africa, you have to go to Cape Town, South Africa, which boasts a very thriving coffee culture. Visit a coffee house in the city center and treat yourself to a pumpkin spice chai as you soak in the vibrant atmosphere. In Asia, Fly to Tokyo, Japan, a city known for its unique blend of tradition and modern atmosphere. Explore the trendy coffee shops in Shibuya and order a pumpkin spice chai to experience the fusion of flavors. In Australia, you head to Melbourne, Australia. It's famous for bustling coffee culture. Stroll through the city's laneways and find a hip cafe to enjoy a pumpkin spice chai while immersing yourself in the city's vibrant energy. And for Antarctica, well, they don't have cafes and coffee shops, but I have you covered. And I look forward to selfies from all over with your, if loving pumpkin spice is wrong, I don't want to be right. (laughs) Next up, I don't know if you saw her slip in and hide in the back. Sue Scott. Good evening. Um, For those of you who don't know me, I am Sue Scott. Mike and I have been married for 36 years this coming August, August 8th, actually. Um, If you have attended any graduations um, during Mike's tenure, you've probably heard the story of how we got together. (laughs) And for if your lot in life is to attend those graduations every year, and for some of you, more than one graduation, you've heard that story several times, right? You could probably tell it yourself. (laughs) Um, So as he likes to tell it, Mike and I first met for uh, the first time at graduation. Um, At every ceremony, he invites each graduate to look around and wonder if they are sitting next to their future spouse (laughs) and makes a joke that they are not allowed to move. Well, I'm here to confirm that we did start dating the summer between our junior and senior year in high school. We knew each other in elementary school, but he wasn't my type. Um, (laughs) And we did graduate from the same high school in 1982. But the dating started at a local grocery store that was located down the hill from where I lived, walking distance. And as Mike, and Mike worked at the grocery store, and as he likes to tell it, Um, he had to ask me out because he was worried that if I kept eating the M&Ms, I was going to get fat because I frequented the store quite often so I could see him. And so that is really what uh, happened and how we started our uh, dating scenario. So the story he tells is mostly true. Mike has never been one to let the facts get in the way of an entertaining story. And he learned that from his father. Uh, Mike, now that you're retired, it's time to monetize the old story and put it to some good use, bring in some additional income. (laughs) Um, You can use your free time to develop a graduation dating app. How about that? No need to swipe left or right, just look left or right. The next person with some advice is our incoming superintendent, Travis. Hi, 
He's going to stay there. Mike, you've done such a good job um, preparing me and our team to take over and lead um, when you retire in July. Um, you've also graciously um, agreed to answer my emails sometimes and my texts most of the time, the appropriate ones. But we're going to need you to um, attach this phone someplace in your house in case of emergencies. My son couldn't figure out how to use that phone, but you put your finger in there and spin that thing around. And Sue, so we upgraded to the rotary phone, and we hope that red really pops in the, the earth tones. Okay, good. Mike, congratulations. For those of you who don't know, there's a very similar red phone in all of our buildings, so that if there's any emergency, there's at least one landline out, right? Thank you. Next up, the president of the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, Deanna Palm. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have dedicated so much of yourself to the Hillsborough community and all your entire career. Ensuring that our kids had the best possible education it has been a 24 hour, seven days a week job. There were probably weeks when you were out every night at board meetings, parent meetings, sporting events, handling emergency or in calls with your staff. You haven't, you have given so much of yourself to the district and the Hillsborough community. You probably missed some of the simple pleasures of life. Many recent and important pop culture trends probably passed you by. And while we hope that you spend your days doing everything that you didn't have time for while you were superintendent, you might need some ideas about what to do with your evenings. And with your storytelling abilities, I might suggest script writing. <laughs> so there is this thing now called Netflix. And you can watch all the shows you've missed while you were working so hard. So here are a few <clears throat> quality shows you can check out. And here are words I've never said in a public meeting. Here comes Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> Join the Thompson family on a heartwarming journey filled with love, laughter, and the joy of everyday moments. Alana, Elena, Alana, a.k.a. Honey Boo Boo, and her strong-willed, words again I've never used, Mama June, will navigate life's challenges with resilience and unwavering support. Or there's Tiger King. <laughs> Follow the touching story of Joe Exotic. He's a simple man from the Midwest with a love of the outdoors and animals who, con who convenes a colorful group of conservationists who use collaboration and kindness to run a small town zoo. A reality series that follows some of the most affluent women in the country as they enjoy the lavish lifestyle that only Beverly Hills can provide. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills offers a glimpse inside the world of luxurious wealth and pampered privilege where, where being seen and who you know is everything. These women are in the center of it all, and they have mansions, the cars, and the diamonds to prove it. From heiress to entrepreneurs to a family of child actresses, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills deliver the star power and the drama. Mike, you are called to action. Make your own show. Make it your own. You're up to the task. Thank you for everything. That's some quality programming right there. <laughs> Our final uh, person with some suggestions for what you can do is Mayor Callaway. Good evening. This is a great time for you to announce your candidacy for Hillsborough City Council, if you'd like, because <laughs> you, you truly are used to meeting on Tuesday nights. Um, okay, back when you and Sue were students, Mad Libs were popular. And so we're just going to kind of share with you a few Mad Libs and would like you to participate and fill in the blanks. So I think we have the first one. It is 1 a.m. on a wintry Sunday evening. The temperature has just dropped to... 32. 32. You look out the window and ice is forming on the street. And you think to yourself, oh, oh my. Oh my.
your phone rings, probably a red one, and you see a blank, blank principal. And we're assuming the second blank stands for school. Okay. So, um, so go ahead. UCA. Elementary school. Principal in the caller ID. You answer and they tell you about the latest harmless student prank that has gone awry. And you think to yourself, oh, oh my, oh my. <laughs> The state economists have just completed a shocking presentation indicating that there is a blank billion dollar shortfall. 1.2. <laughs> your phone rings again, the red one, and the governor is in your caller ID. You think to yourself, oh, oh my. Oh my. Connor calls to let you know that the newly implemented PERS rules allowing for retirees to work back have people interested. Former principals, blank Nason, Tom, Tom yeah, okay, <laughs> blank Callaway, Steve. careful, and blank Lochner Girl. are intending to return as principals in the district. And you think to yourself, oh, oh no. <laughs> And there is one Mad Lib that did not make it. So just hang on, go back, because this gets all sweet. So there's one Mad Lib that didn't make it. And that is Mike Scott announces his retirement. The board, the school district staff, the school district students, the HSD parents, and all those who live within its boundaries, we all say to ourselves, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so now we'll go to the next slide. And it says, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has, has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. And I would edit it to say that to know that even one life is has breathed easier because you have served. Mm -hmm. To change the life of children, all of that, Mike, you have done that for us as parents and grandparents, for us as colleagues, peers, friends. Thank you for making a difference in our community and most importantly in our lives. Thank you for letting us be a part of your success. And we thank you for all the successes that you've had. I think we know that your time will actually be spent fly fishing or in a raft floating down a river. So the board has something for you on that front as well. And, uh, at this point, I get, I'm sure cabinet and staff might want to add. So anybody who would like to grab a microphone and add something, you're welcome to do so, including board members. Go ahead, Erica. I'll, I'll go first. Oh. Unless somebody wants to. Okay. Um, Mike. Thank you seems woefully underwhelming. We'll miss you is an understatement. So allow me to share with you three leadership quotations that embody what I have come to know as the Mike Scott. One is a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. The second is that people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. And the third one kind of brings it all home. A man must be big enough to admit his mistakes, smart enough to profit from them, and strong enough to correct them. Thank you for everything that you have done for this district to allow a person like myself to come to this position and to this community and participate. Thank you. I don't think I could be 
any more eloquent than Emerson or the other beautiful valedictories. So uh, we've only known each other for a year, but it's been a pleasure working with you. And we always tell graduating students, we're excited to see the change you're going to make in the world. And uh, I think on retirement, it's it's appropriate to say we celebrate the change you have made in the world, but there's still a lot of change left to be made. And so I, I wish you the best in continuing that the rest of your adventures. <laughs> You know, I don't know how many districts can say um, that they've had the same superintendent from preschool all the way through graduating high school. And the fact that so many of our students in our district can can proudly say that is is truly a testament of, of your dedication to our community. Um, none of us in this room, I think, would wouldn't would be here if it weren't for your leadership and the way that you have cultivated this community. Um, when we all say we're proud to be HSD, so much of that is the embodiment of, of what you've done for our students and what you've done for, um, for our district and our community. And, uh, I just, I thank you so much, um, for what you've, for what you've taught me, um, about leading with passion, um, and having such a, a zealous dedication and, and a belief in each and every single student. Um, and and you have truly shown that in in how you lead our district. Um, so I'm I'm so I feel so privileged and fortunate and honored to have been able to serve in this capacity uh, with you um, at the helm. And you will be missed. Um, but this is a a very well earned and well deserved retirement. And I hope that you take the time with your family to uh, to rest finally and maybe not pick up that bright red blaring phone, <laughs> um, but, but to truly rest and, and to celebrate um, the decades of, of, of service that you've given to our district. So thank you so much and congratulations. So I guess I have to acknowledge that it's happening now uh -huh. um, and this is me doing that. Um, I was trying to think uh, before it was my turn how I could embarrass you as much as you embarrassed me, you know, for revenge and stuff. Um, and I realized the best way is just to be honest. And so that's what I'll do. Um, <clears throat> first, I don't want to forget to say that I do hope that you get to open the library. Um, I, I really wish that for you in your retirement. I think it's a great business idea. Um, but I do also agree that we need subs, maybe like find a campus that's like near enough to substitute. That would be ideal. Um, <clears throat> it has been um, a real privilege to get to work with you for um, for almost 10 years and, and see you in action and uh, learn what um, makes a, a, a solid leader. Um, it's not usually what people would would think of first, right? Um, but you really do try to meet people where they are at and get them to where they need to be, which I have found to be um, a really inspiring way to to exist in the position that you're in. So I thank you for that. Um, and so I don't cry, I'm gonna be done in a second. Um, and I will just say that as a, as a parent, I feel really proud to have my kids um, going through Hillsborough School District um, as learners and future graduates of our system. And I trust that the system they are in is the best in the state. And that is largely because of you and the team that you have so um, intentionally put together. Um, and um, and when we say that we're proud to be HSD, those of us in the community we really do mean that. Um, and so that's all that I can say right now. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, I want to thank you um, for so many of the coffee chats that we had, even though I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> uh, I appreciate uh, the words of wisdom that you had and the, the conversations that we've had in welcoming me to this board. And uh, what I appreciate most, I think, is your calm and even demeanor. Um, always can count on that stability, even when things get a little heated or um, discussions get a little off course. I really appreciated that and wish you all the very best in your retirement.
keep doing this stuff, but you know, I'm in, in. so I wanted to read this quote, but I'm just going to shorten it. Um, and it says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or whether doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. And Mike, you've always been in the arena with us all the time. And I want to thank you for your leadership. <laughs> Uh, just want to echo the and oh, oh this oh I was going to do student time. All right. Just go for yeah, it. All right. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Student time too. All right. Okay. So um, I think I'll start off first. I really want to thank um, Mike and um, uh, well, hopefully on behalf of the three of us, as in seeing something in us last year that made you think this is these are the best examples of our school district, and we want their input, we want their voice. And we want to make sure that they know that they matter in the school board. Um, and I think this like entire experience has been very humbling to see your leadership and see an amazing community right here that um, you and everyone else has built around, um, making sure that the best interest of our um, of the students and our staff is always um, always discussed and always prioritized. Um, I hope like when I just hope one day I can bring the same sense of like leadership and like um pride into wherever I go in the future. So this is this is like very humbling to see somebody um I don't have any words for like you're just like there's just no words to describe how amazing you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> My turn. Um, so while well, I'm not coming at it from an angle of being able to work with you like all of you guys have, um, my brother's first year um, in kindergarten at Quitama was your first year as a superintendent. Um, and I, as a glue dot to my mom, who was a glue dot to my brother, um, also was at Quitama that year because I was young. Um, so I, throughout your 14 years of being a superintendent, have been able to see um, the warm, professional, and loving personality and vibe that you bring off in the schools that you walk in. The three schools that I've been in, um, in the Hillsborough School District, I've seen you being present and you being proactive with all of the issues um, in all of the schools. So I'd like to thank you for not only teaching everyone here, but also the students that you come by while doing your job to keep a cool and proactive head and, you know, just the amazing things you've accomplished as a superintendent. And also having this opportunity as a school board, you've taught me to be able to ask the, you know, hard hitting questions in a cool, polite and respectful manner that still gets the job done. So I appreciate you and all the all of the success that you've brought our schools and also all of the things that you've taught the three of us. So thank you. Yeah, um, same with me. Um, I think my, like when I was young, uh, you know, little me thought you were like the president of the world <laughs> because, you know, you, to you, you're tall and with the suit. So you kind of seemed a little intimidating. But, um, you know, I'm standing here among all of you, um, especially you, um, Mike. And, um, you know, I'm really um, proud of myself, but I'm really like um, proud of myself because, you know, I looked up to someone like you that you know changes the not the world the world but like um you know the school district um and you know just teaches everyone leadership um like especially little kids um you know just thank you so much for what you've done and you know sadly i i won't be graduating under you know your um super how do you say it, supervision <laughs> Um, due to me being graduating next year, but um, thank you for, um, you know, those, uh, what do you say, like 11, 12, year, 14, <laughs> 14 years of service that you have committed to the HSD and um, the 20 other that you did throughout education. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, I've only been here six years, um, in that time, 
hopefully I've gotten a little bit better every year, and I think that's because of you. So um, there is a celebration for Mike on Thursday afternoon at Hidden Creek. Um, everyone is invited. Uh, unfortunately, you have to hear me speak again there. So um, just letting everybody know. And uh, I guess we would – we'll go out of order. Would you, would you like to do superintendent time now? Uh, whichever you prefer. Sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm going to go over there? Yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for the incredibly nice words and for the roast as well that it uh, went into. Appreciate it. Um, you know, as, as I was thinking about this meeting, I, I started thinking about just some, some numbers that came to mind. This is my 380th board meeting. Ooh, wow. And if you multiply that times four, which I figure is about four hours on the average, that's mm. 1,520 hours. And that's equivalent to 190 eight hour days. And she and said in her comments that some of the agendas are dry and stiff, I think were the words that she used. <laughs> um, so that, hey, I of course have never seen them that way ever. Um, there's, uh, I've, there's been 1930 board member discussion comment times, um, 728 board updates, 72 graduations, 189 follow up text messages from Aaron Carlson after the meetings. Um, I've shook the uh, cold, sweaty, and clammy hands of approximately 18,250 students. <laughs> One of them, who this last graduation said, hey, are you the guy that makes the call on snow days? I said, yes, I am. And he says, thanks for nothing. And then he walks across <laughs> the street. So, <laughs> was, he was not impressed. Um, I, I will tell you, there have been countless incredible partners and, um, and the folks that showed up here today, thank you. Um, Aaron, Deanna, Steve, Janine, thank you very much. Um, our labor partners have been incredible. Melody, congratulations on your next stage. Um, I know that uh, when you're an officer of a union, you, I mean, that's thankless work. You, you get a lot of people that aren't excited about things. And uh, Mary Kay, thank you for being such a thoughtful partner. And uh, the, the conversations have been so incredibly productive. I appreciate that. Um, speaking of incredible partners, I do want to recognize Sue. Sue, thank you for being here and telling partial truths. Um, the, I said before that um, I think one of the things that Sue will not miss are the 4.30 a.m. phone calls on those inclement weather days. Um, like I said, I recently found out that when I was at these 390 board meetings that um, Tuesday nights were her shopping nights, I found out. Um, <laughs> So I don't know which night they'll be or if they'll just remain to be Tuesday. I have no idea. Um, also, thank you for knowing when to ask about the day and when to not ask about the day. Um, we've been together since 1981. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, and I thank you for your support. <laughs> to, the, to the cabinet, you folks are absolutely amazing. Um, if you would have told me 14 years ago what we could accomplish together, along with our incredible school board, this, this school board is second to none. We have, well, Janine, I guess when you were on, sorry, Janine, when you were on the board, <laughs> it was good then too. Um, but, uh, She's sitting but right there. This, uh, this school board, absolutely amazing. And together with the uh, team of cabinet members, um, the, the number of things we've been able to accomplish over the years is absolutely amazing. And I just want to share a few of them. And, and not for my benefit, but just for just to illustrate the power of the team that we have had. Um, our dual language program has grown into a statewide model that people envy and want to want to uh, replicate. Um, we've expanded our equity work year after year. Um, we now have an equity officer on cabinet and uh, district goals around that work that that are very important to us. Uh, we've navigated a pandemic, and during that time, we were able to keep everybody employed. And we made sure that our students had tech and computers and access to learning. Um, we've continued to grow our graduation rates and just incredibly proud of that. Um, we now have students on the school board and uh, that has just been so important for us. Um, Janine, one of your other friends back there that was in on the idea with Lisa and Kim. Um, and uh, we've worked hard to hear the voices of others. 
we developed a career and college pathways program that um, that districts try and duplicate. And we've navigated social and political unrest in a way that we never thought we would have to in the field of education. We now have culturally specific PACs that advise the board two times a year. And we, we work diligently to honor the points of views of other people. And I, I would say out of all those things, um, the thing I'm most proud of is that we've been there for our students and we've protected them when it was necessary. We've, made, we've worked to make sure that they were heard and valued and seen. And, um, and we made sure that they were not judged by their citizenship, citizenship status or the color of their skin or where they're from or their religious affiliation, um, the language they speak or who they choose to love. With the help of our partners and our incredible school board, we've served as the buffer for students and that's what I'm most proud of. To make sure that they know they're valued and their life experiences and family cultures and what they bring are assets and it does not diminish them in any way. In fact, it lifts us all up. Many of us have been on the receiving end of support from, during incredibly trying times from people in this room and just our community as a whole. Those times that really shook us to our core and left us wondering what was next or, or what was going to happen next. And I can tell you the support and the friendship and the occasional pep talk or calling out that's occurred from people in this room has made all of the difference. Um, this team has a culture that has it's just, just incredibly unique. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in three other school districts, and it's a very unique culture here, and I just credit the Hillsborough community for that. The commitment that you have to our students, the way that you put egos aside to do work for kids, and the investment that you have in each other's success is just incredibly humbling. So the support, encouragement, and trust that you that you've afforded me over these last 14 years has afforded has fed me in ways that you'll never know, um, both professionally and personally. And I'm just forever thankful for that. Um, Mark, I know that uh, when you signed up to be a board chair again, you didn't know that you would be uh, doing a superintendent search and deliberately didn't tell you before we had that election. Um, but thank you for the way that you and Rose have navigated this uh, entire process and um, and bringing forward the new superintendent. Uh, you're incredibly good hands. And I would say the only thing that excites me more than the work that we've done and what we've accomplished together is the work that the Hillsborough School District can and will do in the future. Um, I'm incredibly, I have incredible faith in each and every one of you. And um, I truly believe that not all school districts are created equal. And I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to serve in the Hillsborough School District. Um, Early on in my career, I said many times, I, I said it often, and I said it with passion, I never want to be a superintendent. <laughs> and now as I wrap up my years and my service in this position, I want you to know that it's been an honor of a lifetime, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. One last set of numbers for you. Um, Hillsborough School, Di School District may be the fourth largest in the state of Oregon, but it's certainly number one in terms of a board and a cabinet team. It's certainly number one in community partners who show up for kids over and over again. And it's number one in care and compassion for kids. Of course, it'll always be forever number one in my heart. And as always, I'll continue to be proud of being HSD. Thank you, everyone. We'll get sorted back on track and do student representative time. So you guys are up next. If you have anything else you'd like to add tonight or not, your call. No, say it. Yeah. <laughs> Traditional, I go first. Um, uh, so yeah, as we wrap up today's meeting, um, we're not only wrapping up today, but also, um, you know, 2023, 2024 school year, um, 2022, 2023 school year. <laughs> um, uh, I just wanted to say uh, I am honored to be here. Um, serving as a student representative among all of the amazing uh, board members here and um, student reps, um, cabinet members, and community members. Um, 
I wanted to give a huge shout out to um, Rose for giving us the um, uh, the tips, tricks, and all you know that advice uh, throughout you know the school year. Um, thank you so much. Uh, you made our life much easier um, and you know more relaxing because you know the first meeting was always a stressful, but you kept this calm. Uh, I also wanted to give a huge shout out to Mark and Nancy um, for taking me to the OSBA conference uh, where I was. Um, I'm, I believe the only student rep among like the whole state there. It was a little intimidating, but, um, you know, they were there to, you know, calm me down and, you know, just, just to be there. And like, they just, I don't know, they were just like some, like apparent to me, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Just thank you so much for that. And also just taking me to the um, Beat the Odds conference. And I believe one more other conference, but I don't remember the name. Just thank you so much for both of you just to being my guides towards, um, you know, the big people meetings. <laughs> um, I wanted to say thank you to all the board members. Um, although it's like one year, um, it went really fast. I didn't really get to, um, you know, connect um, with all of you. Um, but it was just really, um, I'm really happy to serve um, next to all of you, um, you know, laughing um, and sharing just smiles um, at, you, at you all. Um, thank you so much. And thank you for keeping most of what we talked about between us. Hello, it's me. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, recently, I... Uh, finished serving my 12 year sentence in the school district. I graduated. Um, so I would hundred percent say that um, having this experience in the Hillsborough school district has definitely um, shaped me into an amazing human being that I am today. Um, I feel very optimistic about my future. And I feel that even outside of the, um, outside of the board meetings, um, the school district has provided me with so many um, amazing tools and opportunities that I feel um, I've learned from and I've definitely grown. Um, I definitely would love to thank like all the staff that have taught um, that have taught me throughout the years. Um, even the people behind the scenes, aside from like our staff and our administration, our um, custodial staff who always um, made sure that we had a safe um, safe place to learn and grow as students are um, um, nutrition, um, nutritional staff who have always provided us um, meals, even when it was freezing, or even if there was like somebody who br burnt a pizza in like fifth grade and that caused a whole fire um, at Light Acres, very fun. <laughs> um, um, I'd love to, um, I would love to thank the um, special education um, department ha that has like shaped me to this day and has actually made me feel very inspired um, to continue my advocacy in special education and autism advocacy. Um, I'm freestyling all of this right now, so you can call that jazz. Um, I um, am still like incredibly grateful to be given this um, rare opportunity to uh, um, be an active participant and um, an advocate for um, the causes that I believe are important. Um, before I transferred to the Hillsborough School District, I was a part of um, the Gresham School District and where I saw a lot of um, injustice and inequality for um, teachers, um, teachers, other staff mm -hmm. and students. And so um, I've always felt very strongly about education. And I feel very lucky that um, you all were so willing to open um, open your arms and let um, us three serve and voice our opinions into matters that will 100% affect us and always affect um, the students that come before us. I feel that um, this um, the people who are leaving us this year um, will definitely be leaving a legacy um, that my younger sister and my friends will still begin to um, still prosper under and still be um, begin to start conversations on how to um, improve equity in our schools and inclusive inclusivity in our in our lifetimes, even outside of um, the board. And so, I really want to thank you all for that. Um, you guys make me really proud to be 
um, a student representative this year, and you guys make me very proud um, to know you as human beings. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank all of the board members that were there at my graduation for um, calming my anxiety of walking in front of thousands of human beings and just excited to get my diploma and get the biggest hug. Um, I would like also just to thank you so much for the big smile and thumbs up whenever I guster up the courage to talk in a board meeting or the preface to any visitor in the board meeting that she's going to be a lawyer whenever I talk. <laughs> I love it. And I love the motivation that you guys have all given me, um, the opportunities and the wisdom that you guys have all shared and the um, everything that I've learned, being able to sit and watch how a board operates with each other, with the community, the community outreach, the professionalism has all taught me and I will be using everything that you guys have taught me in the years to come. So thank you, all of you guys. Next on the agenda would be uh, board members time, but since this is a very unorthodox meeting, we're going to begin with former board members time. And I can assure you, your name was brought up a lot earlier before you got here. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here tonight, Mike. Um, when I started on the board in 2009, um, coming on the board uh, was a, was an incredible ride with a very different board, one that had been quite established for a while, and then comes Janine and let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. And I have to say, Mike, first and foremost, you are probably one of the most amazing human beings that I know. And I'm, I'm, I'm being really truthful when I say that because your calm demeanor, as someone said, your leadership style on how it's not just about you in that position and what you're going to do at that moment, but how you can lift other people. And for me, um, being a school board member, being a school board chair, I learned so much from you. And um, when you look around and you think about all that is so amazing about this district, and we do, we have so much to be proud about, about Hillsboro. But that's you and what you have done to not only set the vision for this district, but also to grow, grow our own, whether they are students taking on leadership roles, whether they're staff members stepping up into leadership positions, whether it's staff members coming up to follow in your footsteps, that's you. And that's what leadership is, is when you continue to lift others and to bring others um, up. And, and, and I, just, I just can't say um, enough amazing things about you because when, when you announce your retirement, you know, people, <gasps> but yet at the same time, everything that has been set in motion and the things that have happened, you've left it in amazing hands. And you've left it with, and you do that because you lead with your heart. You lead with integrity. You always had that moral compass. Everyone knew that when you spoke, you spoke from your heart. I never forget the quote that you said that every student is one caring adult away from success. And you live that every single day. And I'm just so happy for you to be taking this next step so that you can enjoy your retired time and, and, and with your family, um, but know that you have left this district in such incredible hands. And I've been very proud to be part of the, the part of this district, Lisa. So amazing. You yourself going on and, and passing that baton. That's leadership. Um, what you've been able to do. And, um, this is just an incredible special place. And it's because of leaders like yourself. And I want to thank you for letting me be a part of that. And I'm just um, really proud to know you not only as that leader, but also as my friend. Thank you. Erica, do you have anything you want to add tonight? 
Yeah, now that I've composed myself, okay, sorry. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to add um, also that when Mike told me, he called me to tell me that he was retired, I was not in the country. And so I told him it didn't count because I wasn't in the country. <clears throat> that was my first thought. Like it doesn't count. I can't hear it. But um, I've also just, I'm really excited for your next chapter in your life. And I'm sure I'm going to see you around and you're still part of our Hillsborough community. And I'm just also really thankful that um, I got to grow up here in this district while you were here also as the leader. So as some of you know, I also am a product of this Hillsborough School District. And while Mike was also um, in, in serving in, in different capacities, but I think that that's something that's really special about our community and something that I value a lot is, um, especially when our kids get to come back and they're like, uh, and they kind of go out in the world and they're like, I actually grew up in a really special place. And that's something that our school district creates. And I am also thankful that you have had the wisdom and forethought to look at our cabinet and make sure that you're leaving us in capable hands and making sure that even though it was that feeling of like, Ugh, I also felt really sure that we were going to be okay. Um, because we have wonderful people that are here to help us. And I'm looking at all of you over there that are going to be holding our hands and making sure everything's okay as we get adjusted. And also um, to Lisa, just thank you also for your service. And again, one of the things that I just want to um, say that is that I was just in awe of the legacy piece, especially of providing um, access to health to our students in high school. That's just like, amazing something that i mean to this day when i pass by century and i see that little module i'm just like this is our work like like in in real life not beyond the board meeting like this is what we get to see that work and that really helps re-energize and motivates us to do this work so i thank you all we live in a wonderful great community that we're mike's still going to be a part of and i just wish you all the best in your next chapter only getting that tonight. Yep, just want to say again, uh, thank you to the cabinet for um, all your assistance in answering uh, lots of questions for me for this meeting. Um, again, Mike, wish you all the very best in your retirement, and Lisa, and all your newfound, not newfound time, just reclaimed time <laughs> um, to spend with your family. Uh, thanks for the audience and for their participation tonight for our audience member who spoke. I think they already left, but appreciate that. And uh, for everyone just to be safe out there this summer, enjoy the sunshine and, and soak it up. And uh, that's all I have. Thanks. You want to go last, Lisa, or you want to go now? I'm just going now. Okay. Uh, shockingly, I don't have a lot to say. Um, I feel like that there's been enough spotlight for a lifetime of discomfort. So um, I don't know what you all will do without Mike and I. Um, <laughs> mostly, mostly just like what, who is going to crack the jokes when we're gone? I don't know who's going to step up, but somebody needs to figure that out. Um, because I feel like we really like, we really carry that for everyone. So um, if you could work on that so that we can see that when we, you know, watch the meetings live stream like stalkers, that'd be great. Um, and I just, um, I uh, really um, will cherish all the um, memories that we have made together and all of the things that we have accomplished um, as a team. Um, I feel like it was definitely time well spent. And so thank you. Sheila, anything to add tonight? Just a couple things. Um, so congratulations to our graduating seniors and thank you to our student reps um, for your service. Congratulations, Melody, and thank you for also your service in this leadership position and excited for you to get back into the classroom. Um, and then also Casey, thank you, thank you for the many, many years um, of service that you provided our district and many of the Many of the, you know, really kind of the behind the scenes and making sure that our district runs as smoothly as, as possible. Um, it has not gone unseen. Um, so thank you so much. And we're excited for, for your future endeavors as well. So thank you. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to find ways to keep Lisa and Mike around. But um, yeah, that's all. Thank you. 
a few more routine matters I wanted to um, mention for my notes. First of all, um, just a few weeks ago, the State Department of Education released the final version of their early literacy framework, a strong foundation for readers and writers, K-5. And I think a lot of you know that I, having every student, every child leave our elementary schools proficient in reading, but a lover of books and reading is one of the most important things to me um, in this work as a board member. And so I think a lot of things in that report we're already doing here in Hillsboro, but I'm excited to see how we can continue to build on that. Um, to President Melody Hansen, thank you for all the work you've done. Um, it's so important to have a voice for those who are doing critical work in our schools and our, our students are able to succeed when our staff have what they need. So you've been an essential voice for that. And we can only hope that your successor will, will bring that same passion and enthusiasm to the world. Um, this is uh, Pride Month, um, where we recognize the rights and contributions of LGBTQ folks. And last month, our board chair read a proclamation, and which was very much appreciated. I think it's worth mentioning, though, that proclamations alone are just words. But we, as leaders and as neighbors and as friends, we live our lives in such a way that those words have meaning. And so I think that's what we do here in Hillsboro. And so it means a lot that that we've done so much to make sure that every student feels like they belong because it's so easy. Everyone who works with children in any capacity, young people, knows that it can be so easy for them to feel different, feel a little bit left out or like they don't fit in. And so the more we can do to make everyone from every background um, know that they, they're welcome here, I think that's a beautiful thing. So I wanted to recognize that this month as well. Um, and finally, just to say that around 1850, a uh, man, Horace Lyman, established a school district here in Hillsboro with $600 in a levy and a single room log cabin. Education, of course, had predated that. The indigenous peoples had educated their children, but that was the beginning of the Hillsboro School District as an institution. And so many people throughout that time have um, played some role in, in, in educating students and making them feel welcome and celebrated. And so to those who are leaving tonight, um, you've been one one thread in that great tapestry that goes back so long. Um, but, but what a privilege it is for all of us to be that, that thread. <laughs> I do. Um, I said what I said to Lisa without crying. I said what I said to Mike without crying. Question is, can I get through what I have to say to the young people? I think if I am... Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> if I come back at it for a second life or a third life, I think I might be a teacher. I think. <laughs> um, only certain people get these words from me. Only certain seniors who deserve them. And you need to understand the importance that they have in my life. Oh, the places you will go. I need you so much. <sighs> I'm sorry, I thought I was going to do better than this. Okay. <clears throat> Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to a great place. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You've got feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own now. And you know what you know. And you're the person who decide where to go. You'll look down and you'll look down streets and you'll look them over with care. And some of you will say, I choose not to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down those not so good streets. Best of luck to you. Follow your heart. Follow your dreams. And don't let anybody dictate to you what you can and cannot do. V, you open the door for other neurodivergent people. 
and you let the world know how incredible they can be. So, Lisa, when you get to hour four of the board meeting on YouTube looking for jokes, please text me to let me know. Okay. Pass. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, Janine, thank you for coming. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just proud to be a small part of Lisa, you, Kim, looking around and going, our, our board needs to reflect our community. So glad to be a small part of that. To the only superintendent I've ever known. Thank you for all you've done. Um, I'll see you on Thursday. So, uh, we our next meeting will be the eleventh, very briefly, without Lisa for the first time in eight years. Um, Casey also wanted to say congratulations on all your years of service to the district. Thank you very much. Uh, after that, we have so once again, if you have suggestions for the all day retreat in August, please get them to me and Rose. Um, so we can get them in. I would also, I think I texted some of you earlier. Um, I would suggest the OSBA conference in uh, Salem. Sorry. It was Ben. It was much, I'm sure it's going to be awesome in Salem. And, and uh, I think um, Yvette is planning to go, so I'll, I'll plan to go as well. But I think it's a great experience to understand how, uh, the, the especially Monique, I think you got robbed of the, the first year you were here. So the, there's a, the all day session on Friday is great for um, uh, new board members, like understand, I know you've been in the job for a little while, both of you, but like having like uh, an organization explain what we're supposed to be doing, like what the legal requirements of our job are and all that stuff is pretty impressive. Um, really helped shape a lot of the work that we've all done. I think most of us are big advocates of the work OSBA does um, representing not just the urban school districts, but all 197 school districts in the in the state, way more rural districts than um, urban ones. And, and their conference is a tremendous illustration of that. So um, if you can make it to that, please go. Um, and with that, I think we are adjourned seven or eight minutes early. All right, we are adjourned.